Hi, I'd like to open the Deerfield Planning Board meeting of November 2nd, 2020 at 7.02. And this meeting is a uh, open to the public and it's normally held at the offices, but it's being held remotely under certain provisions of the open meeting law. Um, and it's been posted at our, uh, at the town offices. So we'll identify uh, the agenda for tonight is to identify board members in attendance, review mail, review minutes, and then we'll have a continuation of a public hearing regarding an application from South Deerfield DG Series LLC. And I'll, I'll read that when we get to it. Um, we <clears throat> might take up some old business, a discussion regarding a proposed bylaw about formula-based businesses. Then we have some new business in A&R map 110 lot four. And if we have time, we'll discuss revised bylaws uh, related to an accessory dwelling units. Then we'll take up any business not reasonably anticipated 48 hours prior to the posting of the meeting. And we'll set a date for the next meeting. Do uh, planning board members have anything else to, to add? Um, I don't believe I saw a mail today, so. Don, you want to just do roll call? Oh, sorry. That's the first yeah. thing. So being on Zoom here, we just um, state your name that you're present and I'll go around uh, uh, the, the matrix here. Um, Denise? Denise Mason, present. Rachel? Rachel Blaine, present. Annalie. Annalie Wolf Cool present. And Mary. And Mary Cludier present. Max. Max Antis present. And I'm John Waite present. So we've got six out of our seven planning board members. Thank you for being here. We have some other um, officials joining us tonight. Our uh, town council, uh, Adam Costa, and our um, our, our, our wonderful organizer and everything else, Jennifer, Jennifer, and that is here. Janet. Um, Jennifer, any, um, Janet, any, uh, any words of wisdom for us uh, doing a Zoom? Yes, tonight? sure. So um, if anybody who's calling in that's an attendee, please do star six to raise your, no, to mute, I'm losing it, um, to <laughs> mute yourself and star six to, you know, do the opposite and star nine to raise your hand and I will call on you when John Waite, our chair, opens up comment to the public. I do know that there are people from the um, Deerfield for Responsible Development that do um, have things to say and they've let me know and I told them just to raise their hand and when you open it up, if when we get to that point, um, we will call on them if we still have time. Great. Thank you, Jen. You're welcome. Um, Minutes. We actually are, are quite behind in approving our minutes. Um, hey, hey, John. Hey, John. I'm sorry. There, there was mail today that was sent to us. That was a pretty important piece of mail. Con that um, it concerns the, the public hearing? Yes. It was sent, I think, about 2.30 today. Right. Actually, that, um, that, that'll be, we can discuss that at, um, during the oh, public okay. hearing. Yeah. Okay. All right. Yeah. Thanks. Sure. Um, and then re regarding the minutes, um, like I say, we're, we're quite behind, but I think we also need to actually like, read them and make some edits to them. But um, also, thank you, Ma'am Mary, for catching us up, I think. Uh, yeah. Um, yeah, I'm sorry. Um, you know, we all have ebbs and flows and I've been very busy. Um, they have been available to most people for a little while. So hopefully people have gotten an eyeful. Um, I did get a message um, <clears throat> maybe a week and a half ago, right after I had shared them with some people. So I changed the accessibility settings. Um, apparently it's a breach of open meeting law for anybody to comment or edit uh, the minutes between meetings. So we wanna keep it legal and on the up and up. So I changed um, the settings. 
So it's important that everybody, you know, take a few minutes to read them. And um, what John did, which was actually kind of brilliant, is he made his own copy, made comments and edits on that, and then shared it with me. That way, that's his copy that I'm looking at. It's not my official clerk copy that people are editing or commenting on, is how I understand it. Jennifer, is that how you understand it also? Yes. Okay, thank you. So I'd like to propose that we actually review the minutes from October 15th, um, because that is the first part of the, uh, of the public hearing that we're gonna continue tonight. And I think it's important that those minutes be, be acknowledged and, and uh, cl clarified maybe. Um, I, I have some edits to it. And I should also state, I was not in attendance at the October 15th, the first part of this, I did get a hold of the Zoom tape and it was a, a wonderful three hours of my life that I got to spend <laughs> reviewing it. So I feel like I am up to date on, on everything and that I can participate fully tonight. Um, I think that's all I need to say. Um, unless anybody has any questions or comments about that. John, the only thing I noticed on the October 15th is that, um, Anne-Mary, you didn't put yourself as being in attendance. So, you know, I'm not sure because it's sort of important to show that we did have a quorum. I think that's the only thing. That well, I, I, have, a, I have a couple uh, things on the, in the attendance. Uh, Anne-Mary, can you be updating them as we... Uh, yeah, and John, I noted yours. I made the updates that you suggested. Okay, because it was missing Annalie and Anne Mary oh. and Denise. You go by Denise Mason, not Denise Larson, right? Well, I go. That's yeah, Denise. It doesn't matter. Denise Larson Mason. That's fine. All right, it's important that's that enough. we. Yeah. Right. And then I corrected some spelling names and things like that. Um, Mine is spelled wrong. Yes. No <laughs> e on Blaine or in Rachel. Right? I know. I kept, oh, I kept auto -correct, correcting to Rachel. I was like, <laughs> <laughs> sorry. Um, and then I, I thought it was important we explained who some people were. So uh, it's uh, Adam Coster is Deerfield's attorney. Mark Donahue was the attorney for the applicant. Um, a couple other spelling things, I think, is all I had. So I noticed that um, Mark Donahue isn't on yet and he sent me a message and I resent the webinar login to him. Um, but I don't know. Jennifer, this is uh, Chad Brubaker from the Scotty Development. Um, I just sent you an email. I don't, Mark is on as an attendee. He's on via cell phone. I sent you his-, his Oh, I can uh, promote him. Thank you. I just saw that. Thank you. Thank you. Yep. Anything else on the minutes? Um, from the October 15th. I'm sorry, my um, computer isn't, is going really slow. So I'm having a hard time opening uh, what we're talking about. But yeah, John, I did go through and make all of those um, edits that you had sent me on your draft. Good. But I Good. didn't know that I, I didn't change them on the official draft yet because I didn't think that we could change them until we were in a meeting. So, so that, yeah, so that's and, uh, what, it won't open, but I want you to know <laughs> that's well, what's happening. I, that's why I want to go through and just say what I'm suggesting the changes are so that if we move to accept the minutes, then we'll have the changes incorporated into that. Yeah, uh, excellent. Motion. All right. So I let me just, just had a question towards the end when we talked about um, additional requests for information. Uh, it mentions Blaine continues to explain requests. One, 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 and one. And then Donahue gives some other items. And so it's a little confusing to me exactly what were the required things for them to come back with tonight. And that is why it's important to, for us to be uh, consistent on this. So let, let's well, just start. I spent another three hours of my life going over this meeting too, uh, re watching it. Um, and so that's how the meeting went. 
the list was interrupted, then they went back to the list and that was the continuation of the list. So, so the whole thing is the list really. I mean, it's numbered and I, you know, it's, there's sort of an interruption where the meeting is interrupted and then it's sort of, I, I, I'm so frustrated. I can't see in front of me right now, but it, I think it numbers like one to three and then four through seven are continued. And those were the, those were the things that I, after watching the, um, watching it a couple of times, that was the list that I could discern. Does somebody have something else in their notes? Nope. So let me read them out. The, the specific requests from the planning board to the applicant. Number one, updating website so constituents can see the plans. Number two, uh, time to look at the DOT plans for the intersection. Number three is an updated septic plan. Number four is the 24 hour to, to 100 year storm plan. Um, it'd be for storm water. Um, pollution prevention plan. Number of deliveries and trucks, uh, number of deliveries and then the truck pedestrian safety. How's that being taken care of? And there was a comment that um, in an example, using the Bernston store would be a good way to, to track how many um, truck, how many deliveries there might be. And then a clarification of the color. Um, I'm assuming that's color of the building. So those are the seven things that we'll be looking for tonight. Then there also was the question about um, trees and changes to the landscape because of the change in the driveway. Right. Um, for the list. <laughs> right. So, um, Anna also planting of trees and changes to the landscape. So that's how should that be re rewritten? Oh, it's just that that's part of the list. Okay. So that would be not, that'd be number eight. Um, what? Okay. But what, what, and what's the specific thing we were looking for? <clears throat> that potentially, or where was the landscape and the and the trees uh, being changed because of the change with the driveway? Yeah, okay. With the new, the movement of the driveway, would that change the existing trees and the landscape plans? This is number eight. Okay. Um, okay. Good. All right, and the other changes that I had suggested were again, the, the names of people that we should put who, uh, which board members were absent, um, who the, um, John, the easiest way to do this, I think, would be for you to share your edit doc with me again. Yep. But I'm, I just want to say it out loud also so that everybody else can yep. hear it. Um, and then, I again, explaining who, who some people are, um, changing the word contractors to consultants, capitalizing Mill Village Road. Uh, Changing, changing a witch to a that, I think. Yeah. Um, and there's one name maybe that we need to get corrected. Um, I think maybe another name spelling. Um, and then clarification of, of Annalise point at the end there, um, that would be the eighth thing that we were looking for, what changes are made to planting of trees and changes to the landscape given the new driveway. And then the motions were, um, motions to continue the hearing was, uh, motion was made by Ann Mary, seconded by Max, motion approved unanimously. 
uh, next meeting was scheduled for October 21st and the adjournment was approved unanimously. Good. We all move to accept uh, to uh, accept these minutes with those changes. I see move. move. Did you move it? Yes. Okay. Go ahead, Annalie. Second, Annalie. All those in favor? Um, we'll go around. Denise. Yes. And yes. Rachel. Rachel Blaine, yes. Anna Lee. <clears throat> Anna Lee Wolf Cool, yes. And Mary. And Mary Cloutier, yes. Max. Max Antes, yes. And John Waite, yes. All right. Save, 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 save. All right, back to the agenda. So those changes were just made and they're now reflected in the minutes because for that the, meeting. If anybody wants to see them, they're now. Is anybody prepared to- um, Thank you, Mary. Review or approve any other minutes or can we put them for the next meeting? I'd say put them for the next meeting. <laughs> oh, so agreed. Excellent. All right, I'd like to uh, open the public hearing at this point by reading the continuation notice. <clears throat> All right, we'd like to continue uh, open the continuation of a public hearing of a court ordered remand on the revised applications of South Deerfield DG Series LLC for site plan approval pursuant to section 5400 of zoning bylaw and a stormwater permit pursuant to chapter 155 of the town code. The development of a 9,318 uh, 9, square foot dollar general retail store and associated site improvements on approximately 1.99 acre site located northeasterly of Mill Village Road and westerly of Greenfield Road in Deerfield, as further identified in the town assessor's records map 132, lot 29 and 30, situated in the commercial zoning district, commercial two zoning district. So as this is a continuation, at the last, at the first part of this public hearing, we heard from our attorney gave an overview of where we're at and the applicant presented changes, uh, updates on their plans. We had a lot of input from the public um, and, and there was lots of questions, some were answered, some weren't. So as we just discussed in our minutes, we, there's eight things that we would like the applicant to present to us now um, and then we can take a little bit more public comment, but I would like to keep this, there's been a lot of public comment and we don't wanna have too much repetition. So just to prepare the public, if you have something new to say, we wanna hear it, but not, not too much repetition. So, but at this point, um, we'd like the applicants to go over some of the, the things that we had questions about at the last meeting. Who wants to, um, Take it for the applicant. I'll start, uh, Mr. Chairman. Uh, Mark Donahue on behalf of the applicant. Uh, let me first start by saying that the um, that, that your minutes don't reflect uh, exactly our notes. There was a lot of talk about the purpose of a continuation. So our list might be a little bit shorter as to what we're focused on. Some of those items that were uh, that you just discussed as part of creating your minutes uh, actually were not assignments for the applicant, but rather for um, uh, actually town staff, for example, on the website. Uh, but with that, there are certain things that we were asked to look at, uh, most particularly uh, on the subject that we spent a fair amount of time discussing, which was stormwater. Uh, and so 
I'm going to ask Austin Turner to focus upon the, uh, the information that was requested to be provided by the board members with regard to stormwater, particularly those board members who didn't participate the first time, so didn't have the benefit of the full presentation, nor necessarily the benefit of the peer review. Uh, it was mentioned during the course of our last meeting that a number of board members had not yet had the opportunity to review uh, all the information from the previous uh, uh, meetings that were conducted that led to the litigation uh, that brings us here this evening. And I trust that that work's been done already, but Mr. Turner will touch on the review process as that deals with it. And then we can move on to um, the delivery methodology, the number of deliveries and pedestrian safety. Uh, and with that, so with your permission, I'll turn it over to Mr. Turner. Thank you. Uh, good evening, and for the record, Austin Turner with Bowler, um, and through the chair, of course, what, what I do, I'll, I'll provide a quick um, kind of summary of where the stormwater design originated from, uh, how, how it went through a fairly lengthy review process, the standards to which it was designed, and we, we actually had prepared at the request of the board a letter kind of summarizing how the project was designed and the standards to which it was designed for. So. Um, if, if you don't mind, I'll share my screen just quickly to, um, to bring up the grading plan and it talks about the stormwater that it specifically shows the, the stormwater basin. Please let me know and everybody can see that just so that I know that you can see that. Yeah, it's up. Okay, great. So just by way of a, a, quick, a quick recap, um, on the stormwater discussion. So this, this project was designed in accordance with the Massachusetts Department of Environmental Protection Stormwater Handbook. And there are a number of standards to which the project is required to adhere to. There are 10 that are defined in which this project meets and related. And similarly, uh, the, the town has a local stormwater management bylaw as well, which this project was designed to be in compliance with. The, the town as part of our initial review process had solicited the services of an independent peer review consultant. Uh, Ty and Bond was retained in that regard to peer review the stormwater design and provide their feedback, which, which they did. And through a series of correspondence on their behalf and our responses to their comments, Ty and Vaughn ultimately issued, I believe it was December 6th of uh, 2018, issued a letter saying that their comments had been satisfactorily addressed and that the project was designed in compliance with the local and state standards. So it, in terms of how this particular stormwater design uh, functions and, and without getting too granular, generally the, the rooftop uh, parking areas and, and some portions of the landscape areas are directed to a single surface stormwater basin, which I'm, I'm outlining in my cursor, if folks can see that here, and generally on the right side of the plan. The way that functions is um, the rooftop stormwater is collected in a closed drainage system and directed to the, the basin, and then paved areas are directed to a sediment four bay, which is designed to treat and attenuate and filter stormwater before it's entered to the, the, the primary infiltration portion of the basin. That water is then collectively detained, allowed to infiltrate, and in higher storm events, the hydraulics of the basin are controlled uh, by a, an outlet control structure, which is constructed with a series of uh, orifice or, or, or weirs that allow the water to slowly be uh, released and, and, and then also has a, a spillway in the event that you know, ex extreme flows are experienced or during um, more intense storm events where that water may then uh, go over that spillway and, and maintain the hydrology that's been established um, for the property. Generally speaking, the way the site is, is the way the site functions in the existing condition, stormwater generally trends from, from the upper left corner of the screen down to the lower right corner of the screen where it's ultimately directed to a, a drainage ditch that's located uh, approximate to, to routes five and 10 along the frontage of the property and the state right of way. In consideration of that, this project has been designed to mimic that existing hydrology where the basin you know, collects water and is again located in the lower right portion of your screen. 
and ultimately releases it to the to the point at which um, it is conveyed in, in the existing condition. What we have done is we had authored a memo which, you know, at the board's request and which I'm displaying here, which summarizes you know, the design standards to which this project um, was designed in compliance with. It, it provides a high overview of the peer review process through that the project was subjected to and ultimately received you know, a favorable acknowledgement from the town's peer review consultant uh, and, and kind of summarizes, if you will, those discussions and again, reiterates the standards to which the project had been designed in conformance with. So that, that's kind of the, the high overview of, of the stormwater and I'd be happy to answer any questions that you may have. Mr. Chair, what's your, what's your pleasure? Do you want us to continue uh, responding to the points that were left at the last meeting or do you want to break it into each subject matter? You know, I think it actually is better to, um, let's, let's address, why don't you guys address them all now, you folks, and then we'll, um, because I know we're gonna come back to this, but um, let's try to check off what we can and, and then spend more time on what we need to. So yeah, if you could go keep going over the other ones. Okay. Um, why don't we uh, move then to the issues with regard to uh, number of deliveries um, and basically uh, a general topic of um, pedestrian uh, travel and safety within the lot during uh, the times of um, deliveries of, of product to the uh, store. Um, and so with that, um, let me uh, ask you, uh, with your permission, Sean Kelly from Vanessa Associates to review uh, the methodologies that are built in here uh, for the uh, uh, delivery system to make sure that it is safe in some fashion. I do note um, that with regard to particularly pedestrian and bicycle safety, that at the request of the board and as part of the settlement, uh, we have added uh, the plant, as you can see on plan left, to the connection to Mill Village Road um, to serve for that purpose. Uh, and we have also widened um, the driveway uh, to provide for uh, other uh, ability of uh, bicycles to be able to be in that area at the same time as vehicles. Uh, but let me ask Mr. Kelly to review with you the delivery system uh, and how um, uh, customer safety is protected. Thank you. Sean. Thank you, Mark. Uh, good evening, Mr. Chairman and members of the board. Again, Sean Kelly with Vanass and Associates. Uh, on behalf of the team, thank you again for having us tonight. Um, so at the last meeting, there were some questions uh, relative to the, you know, the frequency of, of truck deliveries, um, how many arrive each week, um, what, is, what are the types of trucks that are coming here, and we're asked to reach out to um, Dollar General and get some specific information as to what they expect for a store with this size. Um, and consistent with what we had you know, said at the prior meetings, um, Dollar General typically gets one large um, dry goods delivery per week. That's their WB67 is the large um, tractor trailer truck. Uh, most of the stores actually designate that as, as I understand, delivery day, which is a, a set day each week that the, the large truck comes in and unloads most of the dry goods that are delivered to the store. Um, at the last meeting, we had presented some of the truck templates. And again, you know, this site layout, it's your standard retail prototype layout. Um, the truck comes into the site. It's required to do one backing maneuver. Um, that maneuver is into the loading dock, which then allows for a straightforward movement leaving the site that doesn't involve any backing maneuvers. Um, as you can see in the plan, the, the, the loading area shown in, in kind of the white on the top right of the, of the building um, is located to be really as, as far from the, the parking field that's used by the customers as possible. Most of the customers will utilize the front parking field in the, in the front of the store. Um, a lot of times what you'll see with retail uses is they'll ask you know, employees to park on the, on the more remote spaces, uh, such as near the loading dock area there, so you have less turnover during the day. But... Um, you know, we've looked at the auto turn analysis. We've looked at the trunk, truck template paths. Again, these are professional commercial drivers. Um, and, and that's a, a movement that you know, is easily made in terms of pulling in and making that backing maneuver and then leaving the site. So from a, from a perspective of the, the, the large truck deliveries, you know, there's, there's no issues in terms of encroachment into parking areas or um, where pedestrians would be. Um, with respect to the, the other deliveries, um, Dollar General indicated that, you know, typically a store will also get a, and it's a small delivery vehicle, one to two, depending on how busy the store is, a store of this type probably be closer to one. 
um, it's a refrigerated trucks that'll have your, your ice cream, um, you know, your, your frozen goods, um, refrigerated products, things of that nature. And that again is you know, typically one to two um, trucks per week. And then you also get vendor deliveries. And these are, these are smaller vehicles. These are the size of it could be the, you know, a box truck or an Amazon truck. And that's your, you know, your Pepsi deliveries, your, um, you know, your, your bread deliveries, things of that nature where you're, if you're having turnover each every couple of weeks. Um, again, we don't anticipate that there are gonna be many occurrences where we have a large truck at the dock um, simultaneously with those smaller vehicles, but we've also run those analyses um, and, and that works as well. Um, and you know, lastly, I know there was some, you know, some concern relative to pedestrian activity. You know, we certainly don't want anyone walking up the driveway from, from five and 10. And as directed by the board, you know, we've, we've created a, a, a pedestrian path from Mill Village Road to the front of the store. Um, given the, the residential location to the rear of the site, you know, anyone that walks here is, is likely going to be walking down Mill Village Road and coming in that way, or if they ride their bike, they're going to be coming in that way, which further minimizes, you know, any potential conflicts between, you know, pedestrian activity, bicycle access activity, and again, the truck deliveries, which for the larger vehicles are, are again, limited to, to one per week. So, so in a nutshell, that's, that's the delivery schedule. You know, th there's one day a week that's the designated day when they, they will get the large WB67. It you know, requires the backing maneuver, which is you know, typical for a, a site layered of this type. And then the other deliveries are smaller trucks and those, you know, the whole sum of which would be you know, another refrigerated truck and then four more vendors throughout the week. So you're looking at really about, about six deliveries per week in total. Um, I think that's all I have tonight uh, on this topic. Again, be happy to answer any questions you might have. Anne Mary has a question. Yep. Yeah. Um... So when we met the last time, I guess what I understood the specific request to be was to a comparable store, for example, Bernardston. And um, I know you keep giving a lot of assurances, but it sounds like the same stuff that you have been saying for the last couple of meetings. And it doesn't sound like it's based on a store. It sounds like it's sort of based on, um, at well, one point you said we ran those analyses. I'm not really sure what that means. See, at the last meeting, the way I the way I understood it was that you know we had. I'm not done yet. I'm sorry. I didn't. Oh, it's okay. I'm so, I apologize. Um, also, at the last meeting, um, we had a small business owner who said that the small trucks are really just as dangerous backing up. So I'm not sure that there's a point in distinguishing from these big trucks and small trucks because they all sort of present the same danger. Um, so I'm wondering, again, do you have? Um, specific numbers from a specific store that is similar in size to the one that you're proposing? And, and again, I'll, I'll just to, to, re to both points. Uh, at the last meeting, you know, I know we had talked a lot about how many of the larger trucks, um, you know, came to the site and we were focused on the WB67. My recollection was the board's position was, well, you know, Dollar General must have some data. They must know what the deliveries are. So, you know, get us some real Dollar General data. And that's what our client did was reached out to Dollar General and said, for a store this size, what's your, what is your delivery schedule? So um, I wasn't aware there was a specific story. I, I, my marching orders were, you know, have someone in this project team speak with Dollar General and get a breakdown of what the deliveries are, the types of deliveries and the frequency per week, you know, which, which we did. Um, you know, all, all due respect to the, the, the resident who, who, you know, has made his point. Again, these are, these are commercial drivers. This is what they do for a living. Um, you know, they, they drive trucks, back maneuvers in, in, in commercial establishments happen in more establishments than they don't. Um, this is not a, a unique design. This is not something that is, you know, I, I've seen hundreds of designs, whether it's for a CVS or a Walgreens or, you know, or a Rite Aid, Dollar General, you name it. This is, this is not a, a, there's nothing unique about this layout. Um, a single backing maneuver and a site to get the truck in oriented so they can do a pull out maneuver leaving is, is common um, in, in terms of, you know, uh, retail layouts for stores of this type. So, you know, I, I recognize the, the resident's individual comment on this matter, but um, these are commercial drivers. This is what they do for a living and certainly they understand how to do it safely. If, if I can add uh, through you, Mr. Chairman, uh, I, let me ask uh, Mr. Brubaker, uh, if, you know, because I know he spoke directly with the proposed tenant uh, to try to be more specific and he may have some more um, color that he can add to provide to the member's question. Chad? Yes, thank you. Thank you, Mark. Um, and I, I'm, I was the one that shortly after our last meeting had reached out directly to, to Dollar General just to, to ask and I did reference 
uh, specifically the store in, in Bernardston. Um, and I'm looking at the email here right now, so I'll just I'll read you exactly, and it's exactly what Sean had um, um, relayed. But it's it's one one dry truck, which they consider their um, you know large weekly delivery, and they said each store is assigned a delivery day, so it's typically the same day every week. Um, one maybe two cold trucks a week, which again, as Sean said, is the is the ice cream, the freezer products, the refrigerated products, um, and then four vendors, all box trucks. And, and personal vehicles. So those are Frito-Lays, the Cokes, the Breads, the, you know, Pepsis, and, and you know, on average is about four a week. And that was, you know, in a store similar to Bernardston, that's a, what they get and what they would expect on a weekly basis. Um, so, you know, you know, there's, there's probably, you know, half a dozen vendors that, you know, average, you know, every one to two weeks they visit the store. So it's one dry truck, one to two cold trucks and four vendor trucks per week. Thank you, Anne Mary. Is that pretty good or? Yeah, thank you. Um, if I might, Mr. Chairman, somewhat related to the issue with regard to traffic or at least the site and the configuration was the question posed about uh, any changes uh, or additional clearing as a result of the relocation uh, of the driveway. Um, okay. which I, I want to make sure that we don't lose the sight that the driveway was relocated uh, at the behest of, of the town as part of the settlement. Um, and um, I'm not sure who's best to answer that question on our team, whether it's Mr. Turner, Mr. Kelly, or Mr. Brubaker, but we did take a look at that and hopefully somebody can give some color to that. And uh, Austin Turner. So this goes back a little ways, but part of our discussions with the planning board during during the initial review, and my, my understanding is that um, also as part of the discussions that were recently had that, that um, bring us here this evening, the, the driveway in its original location was proposed here. If you can see on the aerial where where, where a driveway was previously established and, and created, and that, which was formally approved by DOT, as part of the discussions that we had with the planning board, um, it was asked that we shift the driveway a bit further to the north, which in this particular image is to the right of the plan and which is where it's shown currently. So that, that driveway was shifted at the request of the planning board and, and subsequently approved DOT has issued their driveway permit for this particular location. Now, uh, to address the question directly, if additional clearing may be required in the right of way, I think, I think the answer is, there, there will be clearing that's required to, to construct this driveway and any of the, the off grading that might be required um, associated with that. The intent is to minimize and limit that to the extent that it's just required to get the driveway in. And then the, the location that was formally created for the driveway, which you can see on this aerial, would be allowed to, to reestablish or, or replanted to, to have that vegetation grow back in. And Ali, I think that was one of your questions, is that? Right, so thank you very much. Um, as you mentioned, it's additional clearing, it's a little bit hard to tell from the aerial view if the clearing is just some of the new growth vegetation or if it's actually some of the trees. I, I, my, my understanding in its current location, it's some of the, the, the new uh, vegetation that is being reestablished but isn't um, part of the more established vegetation that's located bit further to the north. So you don't believe it's trees? I, I don't believe it's, it's the, the vegetation that's you know, um, well established. I believe it's some of the newer, newer growth. That's my understanding currently. Thank you. You're welcome. And that old driveway, which is, um, I think it's kind of hard dirt or sand or something, that, that will be um, new growth over there. The, the intent is, is that that would be reestablished in a similar fashion to what, what has been planted. Yeah. All right, thanks. You're welcome. Yeah. I, I had a question, John. Yeah. This is Denise. Denise. Um, you know, I'm, I, I see that you've moved the driveway. It's my understanding it's approximately 50 feet north of where the old driveway was. Is that correct? Or 50 feet? Approximately. Okay. Okay. And so I'm also, you know, I was just doing a little homework looking back at some old documents. So it's my understanding that there are possible wetland conditions in the right of way 
you know, according to um, Kate Bednaz, um, back in 2018, when she addressed the planning board. So I'm just a little concerned about that. So you're moving the driveway, but we don't even know if there are wetlands in that area. I think the wetland review is, is the subject of, of an RDA request currently with the Conservation Commission. It's, it's the opinion of the applicant that there are no jurisdictional wetland areas within the vicinity of the project or, or which would require further permitting, but that's still an ongoing discussion with the Conservation Commission. Okay. Hmm. Thank you. You're welcome. Um, right. If I might just... Yep. I'm sorry. Uh, Mr. Chairman, I think there was also a question asked at the last meeting with regard to the color of the building uh, right. and maybe some better of that. And so um, I'll see if um, uh, the architect can speak to that or, or Mr. Brubaker. Um, I don't know if Doug, Doug's available. I think Doug's yeah, available. I am. Uh, Mr. Chairman, members of the board, for the record, my name is Doug Gruner. I'm with BKA Architects. Uh, this is actually a, a sample that was taken from the manufacturer's website, and this is the color of the siding that's proposed, Country Lane Red. It's a James Hardy product. That's for all, all sides, all four Correct. exterior sides? Yeah. Mm. Yeah, I can, I can just bring up the, again, as a reminder, um, this was the architectural rendering that, that has been subsequently enhanced based on some of the recent discussions with the planning board. But to, to Doug's point, the, the color of this building is intended to be what we just showed on the screen, that, that country lane red product. Right. And it reproduces uh, in different hues uh, based upon how it's uh, shown on a PDF or on a rendering. But that sample is the actual what the manufacturers reproduce for the color. John, Thank you. Any questions, yeah, planning board? John? Yep. My hand was up. Um, is it used in any other, has it been ever been used by Dollar General in previous? You know, we, we were able to, um, this is a second zoom in. So this, this is a, a building a bit, a bit different in positioning an architectural form, but that's a, a similar color, or well, it's the same, same color product there, so. Thank you. You're welcome. All right, thank you. You're welcome. That's all we had, Mr. Chairman. Glad to answer any other questions. There was a um, point five, we had pollution prevention plan. Um, I'm not sure. I, I can I can speak to the so the stormwater pollution prevention plan. What 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 that document actually is? It's a document required to be filed for for any project or any activity which would would consider disturbing one acre or more of land, be it earthwork or grading or what have you. This project you know, approaches approaches that limit, and accordingly we would we would be preparing the stormwater pollution prevention plan or, or more commonly referred to as a SWIP. Uh, we would be preparing that document and filing that document with the EPA um, at least two weeks prior to any land disturbing activity. That's a, that's a customary document really intended to um, provide documentation and, and supporting measures for construction period or management of construction period runoff and erosion controls. So that, that's, that's what that document is intended to do and as part of you know, our pre-construction responsibilities, that document would be filed with the EPA via its online notification system. Can we consider that um, as a condition, a part of the project that comes to us? Certainly. Well, I think all, all these become conditions, I guess, um, really. Um, or they're part of the site plan review. Um, and then the one- We already uh, talked about the signage. I know um, Mr. Johnny who, you know, mentioned that their signage plans were in compliant with our signage. So that, that's important. We don't have any precision. I mean, there's no exact sign. Um, 
plan presented, just that it will be in compliance. Right. That's correct. And then we have updated septic plan. Is that uh, um, so? There, it's not, there's not an updated septic plan per se. What we did um, at the previous meeting is we, we discussed the history of the septic plan. This goes you know back to 2018. So yeah. the the kind of Reader's Digest version, if you will, of, of that discussion is that the the Board of Health had previously witnessed test pits and and subsequently approved a private wastewater disposal system for this property. That was done in November of 2018. The septic system that was approved by the Board of Health is not and has not changed um, since that time. So there's still a, a, an approval for a private wastewater disposal system for this property that was previously approved by the Board of Health. And that might need to get up, updated or you might, I don't know if that expired and you have to get it again, but you're, you're saying it hasn't changed, so. The That's decision correct. we have not, that, that design has not, not been changed from the one which was formally approved. And has been registered with the Board of Health of Deerfield. Correct, the Board of Health approved it. I, I can um, have, let's see, just of all the things I have open. So this this is the, what was provided to us by the Board of Health indicating their approval. All right. Um, then there was, um, I guess, as you mentioned, the the update in the website was something. Um, Jennifer, do you know was the um, had the plans been on the town website for the past week or two? Yeah. So we um, we made one location where we're putting it between conservation planning, remand, ZBA, and documents from the public that came in before mm -hmm. and after a certain date because right. trying to organize it in some way people could wrap their head around and find documents so a lot of a lot of documents thank you <clears throat> yes um i wanted to mm -hmm. ask you to um chairman when you would like to open up specific comments to the public because people have yep. raised their hand um, okay uh, one more and then um the, the, the comment number, the request number two we had was time to look at the DOT plans for the intersection. Does the planning board member know what that is about and has that been taken care of? We, uh, uh, I don't understand what, what the point was. I'll, I'll leave it to the board to try to uh, tell us what it was. The plans for the for the intersection improvement uh, have been uh, submitted. Uh, are part of um, what is available on the town website. Uh, as prepared by Mr. Kelly, he can he he reviewed all of those improvements at the last meeting. Right. If there's a need for a synopsis of it, we can do it. So, I'm not sure what else is involved in in that uh, request. Planning board members, do you want to? see that again or what was, was something missing? All right. Uh, Max, you have something? Um, I know five and 10 is a state road, but Mill Village and North Main Street are town roads. And those would remain, you know, some improvement to those would be within our uh, jurisdiction as a town. Right. So is there, are you looking for something in particular? Well, I know uh, Darren had some concerns, one of the townspeople. All right, well, we're gonna, we're gonna open it back up for some quick, um, it, it might be worth noting, Mr. Chairman, again, Sean Kelly with the NAS that, I, you know, since we last met with your board, we've actually received the permit from Mass DOT for this work. So we've actually already received our, our state approval for all the work in the right of way, including, um, you know, the, the work at the interface where Mill Village and, and Main Street meet um, 5 and 10.
right. So where, I mean, Jen, where is the, um, the, that on the, the website? Are you this letter? No, the, the, the drawing. From Mass DOT? Um, on the big, I couldn't find it just now. So you went to um, mm -hmm. the green tab on the left-hand side mm -hmm. and it's not part of the ZBA or, it, the thing is, is a lot of this information we were trying to, huh? It's on the ZBA one? It could be. Okay. There's, there's quite a few documents there. I'd have to look through because it's, and, and also we don't rename the documents as they come in. I put them on as they, the way that they're named. I don't rename them. Right. So I'd have to go through. And a lot this, I mean, like this document that's being shared right now says so March 3rd, 2014. I think no, you know, it, it, it supersedes that. Correct. This, super this permit was issued on October 9th of this year. My, my recollection is that Mr. Kelly reviewed with the board at the last meeting the improvements for the intersection. If, if there's still confusion about it, perhaps we can pull it back up and try to do it again. That is my recollection as well, sir. I'm okay. just saying it, it was not readily available on the website. That's okay. Oh. It has been submitted certainly as part of the Zoning Board of Appeals uh, package. All right, thanks very much. Um, yeah, I'd like to, Jennifer, I'd like if you can help me, I'd like to open it up to the public, but we did get some mail um, today. Okay. So I'd like to start with that. Um, there was um, an attorney from Lesser Newman, Alio in Nasser that, um, sent a letter along with, um, and then Stephen Garberbedian review. And I, if they're in attendance, I would request that they, um, if they could, could um, talk first. Sure, so actually that's the hand that's raised. It's attorney Leo, so I will promote him. Thank you. And his colleague. Stephen, doctor. Hello. Hello. Good, Good evening, you. Michael and Stephen. If you could just tell us who you are and um, we, we received your letter and if you could just kind of uh, give us a summary of it, that'd be great. Sure, thanks so much. Good evening. Thank you for- Before we before. start, would, would it be, would would it be asking too much that whatever letter you have? We don't Mark, Mark, we're not hearing you. You're, uh, you're awfully slow, and then you kind of stopped. All right. Is that any better? Yeah. yeah that's, that's your clear. But my question was, would it be asking too much to share whatever letter you have with the applicant? So that is actually on our website under um, the tab that's, so if you go to our front page of our website on the left-hand side, there's a, it's the second box down. If you click on that box and then go to planning board remand, I think that's what it's like, it, it's in there. We're, we're not in the practice of monitoring that on a daily basis, so. That's where we so. put all of our um, documents. I, we'll find it, we'll find it. I'd be happy to email it. Um, I, I'm not able to do it at the moment. Well, I can but, email it to him, it's fine. Well, this is, this is a public hearing, so that's why I asked uh, Michael and Stephen to give a summary of what's in the letter, because everybody should be a, a party to it, but you're right, the applicant should be able to get the full thing at some point. Agreed, yeah. Thanks, Michael. Thank you for having uh, us on, appreciate being here. Uh, again, my name is Michael Alio. I'm an attorney with Lesser Newman, Alio and Nasser, and the folks with Deerfield for Responsible Development have retained me, uh, as well as Mr. Garabedian, I should say Dr. Garabedian, uh, who will address you in a moment. Um, and I mostly want to hand it over to Dr. Garabedian. Uh, a few things uh, beforehand. First, uh, 
as is obvious, we're here on remand from uh, the court. Uh, I just wanted to emphasize that the court remanded this back to you all by agreement of the parties. Uh, it wasn't because the court reached some determination on the merits. Uh, it was that the parties had agreed um, that for because the applicant had a new plan, uh, that it made sense just to send it back uh, to you all for reconsideration. But there's not some uh, import into it being remanded that implies that the judge expressed some opinion about the merits of the application. And the other thing I just wanted to emphasize, and Attorney Costa can address this probably better than I can, but the settlement agreement that's referred to here and there uh, was part of the agreement not to litigate before the court. Uh, it was not an agreement that the terms of the plan that is now before you uh, satisfies local or state regulations. Um, so I just wanna make that clear. You're not bound by the terms of the settlement agreement in terms of the conditions of the of the plan. Uh, the settlement agreement is, was just a vehicle to get back before the board and the board still retains uh, its right and duty to make sure that everything um, that is put before you uh, complies with the applicable local and uh, state regulations. I, I think right. that's enough um, and I, I would yep. honestly prefer more to um, Attorney Costa on the subject. Um, Steve Garabedian, uh, on, on pretty short order, uh, reviewed the plans uh, that uh, are now before you. Um, Dr. Garabedian is one of the foremost experts uh, in geology. His resume is at the end of the document that I sent. Uh, and my, my cover letter as part of the PDF, I included Dr. Garabedian's report. Uh, in the last couple of pages or his CV, I'd encourage you to look at it. It is incredibly impressive. The report is relatively short. Um, the report itself is relatively short. And in essence, uh, his conclusion from reviewing the data and running calculations, which he can explain to you and I'd encourage you to ask him questions about it, um, is that uh, the, um, the stormwater report miscalculates the existing uh, conditions. Uh, and in so doing, after running uh, mm -hmm. his calculations, um, if adjusted according to his opinion as to what the right uh, baseline inputs should have been, that the development would cause an increase um, in stormwater runoff. And I wanna try to get into it into, it into too much more detail because I'd likely butcher it. I'll let Dr. Yeah. Everybody do that. but. He, um, he reviews uh, several of the assumptions in the report uh, and his conclusion is that those assumptions are wrong and uh, assuming he's right, then based on the correct uh, data that should have been inputted from the get-go, uh, the calculations would result in increased uh, runoff, uh, which would violate the local regulations. Uh, but with that said, unless there are any questions, I I'd hand it over to Dr. Garabedian. Great. Thank you. Hi, um, I'm Steve Garabedian, and uh, I wanted to talk to you tonight about my review of the uh, what I'm going to call is the Bowler Report. Um, the title actually is uh, Drainage Report for Proposed Dollar General. And um, I, the report that I reviewed was the one that um, was actually the second report. I guess there was an initial report and then there was a revised report um, submitted in November of 2018. And it's that revised report that I reviewed. Um, and uh, the report is uh, quite thorough. Uh, it follows the typical format for these uh, engineering reports uh, for both the uh, uh, the stormwater uh, design, uh, the management design, the maintenance plan, and, and the documentation that's necessary for that. Um, what I want to do right now is just to sort of cut to the chase. And that is towards the bottom of the letter that I actually uh, sent to uh, attorney Alio and that has been forwarded to you. Um, and um, 
that is is that the um, um, the runoff rates that um, were calculated using the store uh, the the soil characterizations in the engineering report uh, inflate or uh, over estimate uh, the runoff from the existing site, okay? And the reason that I say that is, is because they're using uh, a hydrologic soil group, uh, which is a C soil group. So these, these various soil groups that are characterizations um, uh, developed by the NRCS, the Natural uh, Resources uh, uh, Conservation, they, they are A, B, C, and D. And um, the soil that's on that particular site is characterized by the NRCS as being um, a B slash D. And you can see this in the report and I have checked it and it is indeed characterized as a B slash D. Now, um, if you read the handbook that's developed for the use of these hydrologic soil groups, you'll see that the soil, though that particular soil will be characterized as either B or D, depending on whether it is a saturated soil or an unsaturated soil. And uh, particularly in the upper part of it, the, the uh, part that's closest to the surface. And so if it is saturated, if it's wet, then it would be characterized as a D or in the HSG category as D. If it is relatively dry, um, which is to say that the, the groundwater level is, is relatively low uh, to the surface, uh, fairly deep, then it would be characterized as B. Now, the reason that this is important is, is because in their report, Bowler has characterized this area in its existing condition as C, which at first look would seem reasonable because it's between what, B and D. The problem with that is this, is that if you use C in the model that they're using, which is the HydroCAD model based on the TR20, TR55, NRCS model, then you will get much more runoff than you will if you use B. And most of the soil on that particular lot is B, particularly the soils that are in the higher elevation portion of the, of the lots. So um, I know this seems very technical and very sort of picky -oon, but the reality is, is that characterizing the soil properly in this engineering analysis really determines how much runoff is expected uh, uh, from, this, from this particular piece of property. So when I ran the TR20, TR55 model with the B in the pre-existing condition, I get much, much less runoff. Now, the reason that's important is when you make this pre and post development comparison, this reverses the, the conclusion that they make, which is that with their design, um, they actually have less stormwater runoff um, after you know, the installation in the, in the post-development condition uh, relative to the, the pre-existing or the pre-development condition. So, um, however, that's, that's not the case when you use B instead of C, which is what they've used. So I hope, I realize I've done a lot of hand waving here, but I hope I've, I've explained basically what I've said in this, in this review. Thank you. Thank you very much. I have a, a question. So Bowler did an initial report back in April of April 20th, 2018. Um, our peer reviewer, which was Ty and Bond came back and that was one of the, the points they reviewed and they, uh, were you able to review the Ty and Bond letter of, um, I did, December, I did look at the, I did read 26th. the Ty and Bond letter and I did read the piece 
about the HSG characterization. At that point, the tie and bond reviewer uh, made the point that they were initially using the D right. category uh, for the pre existing condition and then the C category for the post development condition. That's that's my read of the of their letter. From my perspective, what they should have said is, it's a B. It's not a well, C. It's a B. So that's my question: is that because because our our peer review tie and bond did question them, and ask them to redo their calculation using C instead of D. Um, so I'm curious how why would tie and bond have missed that and. Uh, why wouldn't they have asked them to do the calculations based on B soil types? It's not a C. If you look at the NRCS rating for that soil, it is a B slash D. And if you look at the handbook, the way it's to be applied, it's either a B or a D. It's a B if it's a relatively dry soil. It's a D where it's wet. So, for example, there are wetter portions on this piece of property. Okay, there's been a discussion about wetlands, et cetera, et cetera. I've actually gone and looked at the property. I did that last week. And sure enough, yeah, there's some wetter portions, particularly during, you know, when it when it's raining. Right. So what I'm what I'm trying to um what I'm trying to express here is the fact that. The upland portions, the portions that have higher elevations are drier, which is to say there's a significant enough depth to the groundwater so that those soils act as a B. Down near Route 5, where it's wetter, it's acting like a D, all right? And there's a big difference between the amount of runoff that you get from a B soil than you do from a D soil. And their calculations, their their updated calculations were based on the C. That's correct. Um, um, all right. So I guess this is a um, so this is some new information, and I'm I'm not sure the applicant is in a position to um, to respond, but I want to at least give them a chance to make sure they understand what what this comment is. And do you have any any quick comments? Well, I, I, a couple. Um, uh, Dr. Garabedian has done a good job of reminding me why I was a history major and not a, uh, an engineering major, um, but appreciate his efforts and appreciate that he's been, as uh, Attorney Alio indicated, he's been retained by a group that is vehemently opposed to the development. The fact of the matter is that the stormwater was reviewed by a peer reviewer, an independent unbiased peer reviewer, commonly used by the town. They provided the report to you. You concluded that the stormwater met the standards required and we consider stormwater a done issue as far as this is done at the present time. If I might make a comment. Yes, Michael. Um, Dr. Garabedian uh, went through uh, clearly did not make a critical comment of Tyen Bond's intentions. Um, that doesn't mean that Tyen Bond uh, didn't potentially make a mistake uh, unwittingly. And I've had the pleasure of being involved in a project with Dr. Garabedian where Tyen Bond was the peer reviewer and he and Tyen Bond had a good rapport where they were able to communicate back and forth about Dr. Garabedian's concerns and Tyen Bond's opinion. In that circumstance, it was very helpful to the town to continue the process so that Ty and Bond could consider Dr. Garabedian's input and then let the board know what it thinks. Uh, in other words, uh, Dr. Garabedian is presenting that the soil types are B or D, not C, um, but that soil type B should have been used for the purposes of the calculations. Okay. And if so soil type B were used, then you'd have a real problem here. Dr. Garabedian might be wrong. Um, it's very possible that he is. Uh, he has been retained by residents who oppose the project. 
um, but he does not oppose the project. He is somebody that was retained, just like the applicants retained uh, experts to review the project. So what I recommend is you ask Ty and Bond and then you know, even authorize Ty and Bond if you were so inclined to speak directly with Dr. Garabinian. They might disagree. They might say, no, we did the right thing by going with C, but even if we went with B, as it turns out, Dr. Garabedian didn't multiply the numbers the way you're supposed to multiply numbers or whatever it is. I'm sure it's not that simple. <laughs> um, but that said, Dr. Garabedian is not in the bag of the abutters or of Deerfield for responsible development. Um, residents of Deerfield who have legitimate concerns about stormwater runoff and flooding spent their own dollars to retain Dr. Garabedian. Um, and so at any rate, I don't think we can resolve this now, but I would ask that you at least consider uh, putting Dr. Garabedian's calculations to tie and bond and perhaps permitting them to engage in some sort of exchange of communications. So if they have questions about Dr. Garabedian's rationale or calculations, they can ask him directly. I need not be involved in that process. Thank you. Planning board members, any questions? Denise? I don't know if I have a question, but I certainly appreciate Dr. Sorry, I'm not pronouncing your name, Garabedi. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I certainly um, appreciate, you know, the, the work that you've done. And I mean, I've certainly been, I've been very concerned about the storm water runoff and concerned about the detention pond. I mean, there's, 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 as far as I'm concerned, there's a lot to be concerned about as far as the runoff is concerned and the wetlands issues. So thank you for your report. Thank you. Jennifer, are there other folks that wanna bring new information to the board? Uh, <clears throat> I don't know if they're new information, but I, <laughs> <laughs> um, we do have a couple of hands raised, so I have, um, so well, let me let me if I can just make a general statement that um, we have heard a lot of things and I, I want the public to speak. But if people start speaking and repeat, repeating things that we've already you know talked about, then I'm going to ask them to, to keep it very short and maybe even cut them off, which I hate to do. But um, sometimes you do need to do that. So okay. thanks. And unfortunately, Michael and Stephen, I'm going to have to put you back over there. So thank bye. you. Bye. Thanks. Okay, so I have Tolly. Okay, Tolly, go ahead. Hi, Hi. good evening. Hi. Tolly Stark, I'm chair of Deerfield for Responsible Development. I'm on Keats Road. Um, I just want to say thank you to the board um, tonight and um, thank you all for taking time to go through the information and compile the list that you have. And I just wanted to be sure that the board um, know to um, check in with the Board of Health around the septic. I know there was an approval that is due to expire, but also they did change the site plan. And so I think the Board of Health um, would be interested to reevaluate that. And I also just wanted to say that um, Deerfield for Responsible Development um, is not uh, vehemently opposed to this development. All we wanna see is that all of the proper um, bylaws are followed, all the procedures that need to be followed are, and that um, if this development was to occur in our town that it's done in a responsible manner. So we appreciate you guys for um, doing your due diligence and um, being sure that that occurs in our town. Thank you. Thank you, Tolly. I have um, <clears throat> Lily. Mute me. There you go. Hi, Lily. Hi, Lily Dwight, South Mill River Road. Just two quick points. Um, last meeting, uh, Attorney Donahue said that the 
uh, Route 5 part of the development was not their responsibility. But <clears throat> I just want to share a direct quote from Mass Green Dot. Private developers that access state-owned highway are required to design, build, and operate their projects in a manner that encourages and seeks to increase walking, bicycling, and transit use. And they have not done that. They've done a great job of improving it for uh, motor vehicles, but they have not done it for any of the, any of the other multimodal forms of transportation. And the other point I want to make is uh, John Paresky was the gentleman who uh, spoke of the his concerns about the turning around in the parking lot. And John, who serves on our finance committee in town, is also the former CFO of a major trucking company and actually knows the financial cost of these professional drivers having accidents. And he is extremely concerned. I believe he emailed you guys. But anyway, I just wanted to stand up for his reputation because he was he he is an expert and he knows what he's talking about. Thank you all for your work. Have a good night. Thanks, Lily. I have uh, Judith Kendall. I just have a question for the applicant. I understand that um, you now have the highway access permit. And I just wondered if you could provide that to the town so we could look at it. I know that the original driveway permit had a condition that there was no water to be discharged onto the state right of way. I don't know whether this one has the same condition in which case you'd need to get an additional permission from the state. But um, I haven't seen the actual permit that you've gotten for this site. So that's, that's all I'm asking. Thank you, Judith. Jennifer, do we have yeah. is that one of the ones you said is on the site? I'd have to take a look to see. Yeah. I mean, I'm sure. Say it again, Judy, it's, a, it's the which? Well, the original permit that was issued to Greg Gardner or the ideal movie or whoever got it, the original driveway permit, had part of, part of the conditions were that there was to be no water discharge onto the state's right of way. They could have the, the vehicle access, but they couldn't have water. And so there's an, a separate type of permit for that, um, non-vehicular access permit. So I don't know what permit they got, whether they got the plain just driveway permit or whether they have to do more work for the drainage to go into the state system. So that's all I'm asking. Through you, Mr. Chairman. Yeah, um, Mark I, or I, Sean. Yeah. I, I think we've already shown on the screen I, and I think we have filed with the town, but I, I, I don't want to say that we definitely have. If we have not, we will file a copy of what we showed this evening as the superseding uh, state access permit. Thanks. Thank you. And just again, everybody, there's a lot of um, a lot of documents on the site, so um, we'll have to sort them out. Some of them are dated, I think, Jennifer, so that can be helpful for some people. This would yeah, be a newer document. I mean, this is newer documents. So. So like Mark Donahue said, that one's dated as 2014, but then it's superseded by a, one that was issued earlier, you know, later. Um, so yeah. yeah, I'd have to see where we can find them. And All right. um, so we have two more um, people that are interested in asking questions. Okay. We have Lori. <sighs> Lori? Hi, yes. So Hi, I. Lori. Um, start my video. Okay. So I would just like to ask why um, the developers went through all the trouble of changing the appearance of the outward shape of the building with gables and country red facade and then still put out a sign that does not 
say quaint or country in any way, shape or form. A lot of uh, companies like um, Dunkin' Donuts and even CVS and different communities have gone with a dark sign with gold lettering and made it look classy and fit in with a, um, a country community. Um, but there is no, none of that here. So it seems like that sign just totally obliviates any um, attempt to try and make the building fit in with the neighborhood. I'm curious about that. That's a, um, it's a, it's a question, but I'm not sure it's something that the planning board has, um, has pushed on um, yet. So it's certainly, I think the, the question is, Laurie, is that something you want the planning board to? Yes. To bring I, yes. <laughs> because we do have a, we do have a signed bylaw and they're going to be within the signed bylaw. The bylaw is primarily about size and um, whether it's lit up at night or things like that. It doesn't, specify what color it is, um, how big the letters are, um, but that is something that we could, I guess, uh, you know, have a, have a discussion with the applicant about. So planning board members, is that something we want to put on our list? I, I, I mean, it, it must be in the range and the architect's here, so he could talk to us about that. Um, relative to the building that he showed. Obviously the, the building that he showed had a very different sign than the, the sign would be for our, you know, this proposal, because mm -hmm. um, our regulations wouldn't, wouldn't permit that particular sign. So that is something, I don't think we've asked to see the exact sign that's gonna be used, but we would want something that would blend and, and in with the- what, With what we've gone through with VESH, I mean, <laughs> <laughs> their unhappiness with our sign and we've hmm. <laughs> Chad, do you have a comment on that? Uh, yes, uh, Chad Brubick of Scotty Development, thank you. Um, the sign, and just to clarify, and I think it was uh, discussed previously, the sign that was shown in that photo was, was totally, under, it's not what's being proposed here. Um, and as has been discussed multiple times, um, you know, our, our, the, the tenant is responsible for signage. As we've talked about, the building will hopefully be there a, a long time. Tenants change. Each tenant would be responsible for coming to the, you know, the appropriate town um, entities to get approval for their own signage. So the intention is that we're not asking for any variances or anything on the, um, on the signage. And that was the sign would comply with the uh, town bylaws. But then we're go, we're going beyond that and asking, could it um, be more in keeping with the color of the store and the shape and everything instead of just being a rectangular yellow sign? Yeah, yeah uh, we can We, I'm sorry, I didn't mean to interrupt, Chad. We, we're not prepared to commit to to any restrictions beyond what's in the zoning bylaw with regard to signage. It's you know, we'll our tenant, whoever that tenant's going to be will be provided what the bylaw is and will comport to it. Uh, and they can have whatever discussion at that time um, uh, would be appropriate, but we're, we're not prepared to limit or, or otherwise start to restrict what the bylaw provides everywhere else in town uh, for this site in particular. Well, I think, I think we often have this discussion with, with uh commercial entities that do come in and build something new, or if it's a change of use, these are the discussions we often have during a site plan review. Um, this, this is a sort of a country town and we're trying to kind of keep it that way. So, Laurie, did you have another comment? Uh, just, just that we are going through a site plan review process for a specific building and the sign goes with who the building is being designed for. So that doesn't, that doesn't seem to fall in line we are asking yeah. we you know they conceded to making a building that looks like it fit in with the surrounding buildings but not not on the sign so well that's that's not a fact but anyway so i hope the planning board will address that thank you thank you <clears throat> we have uh, debbie shriver Hi, Debbie. Let 
unmuting and I will, let's see. Can you do the, undo the video? Uh, start video. Here we go. Thank you. Uh, thank you all. I have um, a question, two, two arenas. One is that um, last meeting, I also raised the issue in addition to asking about whether mature trees would be taken down in the construction of the driveway, which I understand the applicant has said they think is not likely to be the case. I also asked about stormwater because there will be stormwater coming off of that driveway and entering the um, um, catch basin that is just at the northerly edge of the property or really right near between the rock fossil dinosaur shop and the edge of the property. So I, I uh, think it would be helpful to know what accommodations are going to be made for stormwater, how the stormwater from the driveway will be mitigated. My second question is about the detention basin. I uh, know that there are portions of that site that are more wet. I believe they are going to be areas that are re in relationship to the detention basin. And I, if, if my understanding is correct, there needs to be a two foot separation from the seasonal high groundwater table to the bottom of the detention basin. And, and there are places where the separation uh, from the groundwater to the surface is about 15 inches. So it, it will require some additional, apparently, soil at some point to, in order to accommodate a detention basin on the site. So my question is, how is that going to work with the grading of the rest of the site? Does that mean that the building area is also going to be graded up? It's, it's hard for me to picture how you do a detention basin raise that part of the land and, and, and that it doesn't look weird uh, or, or uh, may not even function quite properly unless the other land around it uh, is similarly uh, has soil added to that. And that will change the whole appearance of the uh, building on the site. The, the, the view that it'll sit, if, if what I'm asking about is correct, and I don't know that it is, um, if the building is then also raised accordingly, uh, that gives you a very different view from North Main Street, from 510, from Mill Village, from the condos. And I'm just interested to understand what's the whole configuration of the site is going to look like when, if you have to account for raising the level of the detention basin in order to meet that separation that's required. I hope I make sense. My name is Debbie Schreiber and I live on Pocomtuck Drive. Thank you, Debbie. I I think that's been addressed, but can you just go over that one more time? Is that Austin or who does that? Which which part of that do you want me to address directly? Well, the detention basin, and is there the two foot um, difference there? Do you have to raise the building more? No, we don't We don't have to raise the building more. We've, we've provided adequate separation to groundwater, as, um, which is one of the standards I was referring to kind of in the the beginning of this. So, so there is adequate separation of groundwater in our, in our opinion and, and the opinion of your peer reviewer. And Debbie, why did you think there wasn't something else? Well, because I thought that at some areas, and I do remember Jean Christie from Ty and Bond speaking in the December 6th meeting in 20, or maybe it was November uh, meeting uh, in 2018. And, and she, she uh, observed in her comments, she said, that groundwater was 15 inches below grade in certain areas. She said, very shallow. And I'm quoting now from her testimony. Uh, if I found a 15 inch groundwater de depth, I would find another site maybe. And that was uh, November 18th, 2018 at the planning board hearing. That's Jean Christie, project engineer from Ty and Bond. So she was seeing a problem of some kind. I don't know how that relates specifically to the um, the location, the precise location of the detention basin, but we sure don't want water from the detention basin moving into groundwater and uh, creating uh, potential pollution problems. Mm -hmm. oh, through, through the through the chair, if you don't mind, I, I, yep. I recall I recall that discussion. I think the anecdote that, that Mrs. Gray had mentioned was, you know, with respect, acknowledging that we'd done a lot of work with her, with her in that. You know, she said, you know, it, 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 it was a complicated site and a complicated design which, of which they spent a lot of time reviewing. And, and her, her comment, I think, was made in jest to say that, 
or imply that we'd, we'd worked very, very hard with her to make sure we were documenting compliance with, with their standards and addressing their comments rather than to imply that you know, the design didn't meet some standard or was impossible to meet that standard. So I, I understand the comment and I can, I can appreciate why it was taken out of context, but I think she said that kind of in jest after she was acknowledging we'd worked, we worked fairly extensively to address any concerns that the peer review team may have had. But my point was actually the 15 inches of separation from the, the 15 inches that she cites uh, to the groundwater depth at, at locations. And that's my particular concern in relation to the detention basin and what, what, what amount of soil has to be added in order to create that separation for the, for the detention basin, if that's the case. That's my, that's my question, Mr. Turner. Thank you. Yeah, I'm looking at the report. I'm trying to find that because I remember the discussion. Um, I, I thought it ended up being satisfactory to tie in bond at the time. Yeah, it, it was because I remember the groundwater and the, and the soil profiling was something of particular focus. So we, they had acknowledged that we met the minimum groundwater separation standards. Elsewise, they couldn't have they couldn't have issued a letter that said they had no further no further concerns. Thank you. You're welcome. Appreciate your help. <clears throat> and one of their comments was the proposed outlet from the detention infiltration basin has been relocated further into the subject site. I think that was helpful. Um, all right. Have we successfully located the document that Judy Kundal reference? Oh, good. It's on the website? I haven't seen it. Oh, I thought you said you did locate it. You didn't. Okay. So the applicant will, will forward that to the town. Anybody else? Uh, uh, Denise, you have a question? Oh, sorry. I was just thinking, I mean, what, what Dr. Garbidi, Garbidi said, you know, if, if he is correct, and I tend to believe since he is an expert. So if there's a lot more, um, a lot more runoff because the soil was, was not correctly identified, then wouldn't that affect the detention pond? And also, I mean, Darren Gray had, you know, I was looking back at some of his testimony and, and it seemed as though, um, you know, if there's that much more runoff, is the detention pond going to be adequate? And is there going to be, um, yeah, I can't think of what to say. Is that going to be adequate? Or is it going to overflow? Right. Sorry, Jen. I, I just yeah. wanted to have a slight reminder about the remand and what was mm. cited before. And I understand that there's new members on the board that weren't present before, but we have to sort of back it up and remember what's before us tonight and what decision we have to make hopefully tonight and what decisions we have to put in place tonight. Um, I, I just wanna have yep. that refresh, Adam Thanks. here if it's... you have any questions. We will go to Adam if we have a question about that. Thanks. Thank you. Does anybody else have their hand up? Jennifer? No. Anna Lee has something to say, and then there's nobody else on the attendees list. Okay, that's what I was just because I don't see the attendees, so I just wanted to be clear sure. about that. Thank you very much. Sure. Anna Lee. Yeah, so I do have a question. I believe it. Um, relates to what Jen was just saying in terms of what we've been asked to do with the remand hearing. I don't know if this is the time for me to mention it. This is in regards to, I think, you know, we had 54, 61, 69, 62, 67. I have a comment about one of those in particular, or so, that later. Well, no, so the, 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 the question now is, um, so no one else is raising their hand from the public, and this is a public hearing. And so at some point we can, uh, if we feel like we're finished with public uh, gathering more information from the public or we don't have any other questions to the public, then we can close that. And then what, what we would do is deliberate as a planning board. But it's important that before we close it, that you do, if you have some questions that might require some other outside information, then we should keep the hearing open. So 
I just I just want to say that at some point we do need to close the public hearing, but I'm I'm happy to keep it open in, in, until all of our questions are satisfied. So, well, John, John yeah. this is Denise. I, you know, I, I do have some questions. As I said, you know, as, as a new planning board member, I felt that it was sort of my responsibility to go back over. So, you know, I didn't look at all of them, but I certainly looked at some of the documents, and I had attended, you know, a few of the meetings. And you know, my recollection is that we had asked. Um, Let's see, we had asked for, sorry, I've got my notes here. We'd asked for a new uh, uh, a site plan. We ac actually asked for a model. And um, I think we asked Austin Turner for that. Yeah, scale, uh, scale rendering back in 2008 and Austin Turner agreed, but we still don't have that. And I think that's sort of troublesome because what we did see from them was that sort of an aerial view, which, <laughs> It's not the view that people are going to see. And I think we'd asked for that. I think we asked that again. And to date, I don't think we have gotten that. And that is a big concern. So we, we asked a lot of things years ago. Um, and some, some things we got in, you're right, some things we might not have gotten. But the nine items under the site plan review, none of them require that they do a, um, a model. Um, so. There's certain things we can ask for, but they don't have to, but it-, it Well, if someone doesn't... agrees to do it, I would assume that they would do it. I, that was not in the final, um, mm. I, I, I was at all those hearings. I don't remember yep. that that was a, like a hard, fast thing to tell you the truth. Well, I um, think it was a request that was agreed it, upon. So I thought. I, I don't have it in, I've, I have all of our kind of more official documents. I, I must say, I don't. Okay. It could have been a, the public was requesting a lot of things. I know that. Yeah. Whether we actually, uh, you know, specifically requested it, I don't have that record. Mm -hmm. Okay. Thank you. Yep. Annalie? Well, yes, Annalie will call it. I think my recollection is that it was requested and the request was rebutted. But to me, the whole piece of the scale does seem to be the elephant in the room that 5467 does say that we need to look at if there is an unreasonable departure from the character and scale of the buildings in the vicinity. Yeah. Yeah. And it seems to me that's been a common thread throughout the discussions. And it is disappointing that there has not been specific response from the applicant in regard to the scale. I understand zoning board looks specifically at the actual square footage, but certainly 5467 says that the site plan should minimize unreasonable departure from the character and scale of the buildings in the vicinity. And I, I wish that the applicant could. I think that. Do you think the fact is it, uh, the proposed plan is unreasonable departure from the character of the vicinity and that's they haven't changed that and so that's part of our decision there's not they they're not they're not going to change it so okay that, we have to make it we have to make a decision based on the information they give us all right thank you so i i do also want to just say that you know this this is a a, a remand which which means you know a judge said we should look at it again it has been two years i want to make that clear because and i can tell you the the first what, what they called, some people refer to as a settlement meeting was actually quite some time ago as well. So a lot of time has passed. Um, so if there are things that we need to relook at or new calculations, I, I certainly don't think that's, that's a, a hindrance to this. Um, so, you know, I, I think it's not, we're not going back to the beginning. We're, we're trying to keep it short, but um, as I said, things have changed, new information, new people. So, you know, things are on the table. Um, but so I guess the question is, uh, at this point, do we keep it open? Do we want to have more information about this new information that came up tonight about the hydrology and this and the um, soil types, which then would affect the runoff? Um, normally, none of us are, are soil scientists on the planning board. So normally we would hire a, a peer review to, to help us with that. Um, if, if we think this is new information that we want to, you know, have a double check, we could hire someone to do that. Um, 
some of the other things, you know, we, we, we have in front of us what we have in front of us. We can't ask for changes. We can't tell them what kind of sign to put up. It would be nice if they discussed that, but they, you know, they don't have to, but we can make a decision. So I guess I'm, I'm wondering, do we keep this open? Do we ask for more information? I'm, I'm a, I believe the applicant is hoping that we, um, we close it and make a decision tonight, which we could do. Um, I'm asking for input from the board. Mm -hmm. Denise, sorry. Well, you know, I, I think, uh, you know, I appreciate all the information that Dr. Garabedian uh, gave us. And I think that is really key to making our decision. And, you know, I, I understand how, <laughs> how the applicant really wants to move on, but they have to understand that we live here we will be dealing with this for a long time to come. And it's not just us, we're representing the town and all the public comments. So, you know, I, I understand you wanna move on, but I think we need to, I think we need to have, you know, gather some more information pertaining to what Dr. Gary Bedian, um presented this evening. If, so if, if I might, if I might, Mr. Chairman, um, if, it, Mark, not, if I can, Mark, if, I, if Mark, if I can just ask, I was going to ask our attorney to make a statement first, if I may. Thank you. So, Adam, we, um, if we could just call on you, I know I'm pretty sure I, I know where you might come from on this, but um, there isn't new information. We still have some concerns. Um, do you have some guidance for us? Um, we, this is the first remand I've been involved with. So um, we're, we're still open to learning how to do it the best way. Um, sure, so uh, so thank you, Mr. Chairman, members of the board. I'm Adam Costa, I'm town council. I was at the first session of the um, remand hearing as well. Um, so uh, I've been listening along and um, making some notes of my own. And so I think that there's been um, somewhat of a misconception maybe amongst uh, members of the public and maybe even amongst certain board members about um, what is um, what a remand entails. And I think there's also been some some misstatements by uh, those who have spoken from the public concerning um, the history here and, and how we got here and what the board's obligation is. So I'm just gonna, gonna tell it to you sort of straight um, very objectively, you of course are the board members, you are the voting members, I am not, you can proceed however you so choose. Um, but I do wanna provide a bit of history and I'm not gonna go on at length. We are back, uh, the applicant is back before the board and I'm uh, before the board assisting it tonight and all of you are back on this project um, because there was a site plan approval that was denied and that was appealed to the, to the land court and we shortly thereafter entered into settlement discussions. And generally when settlement discussions are entered into by a municipal board, the board as a whole doesn't participate in those discussions because there is an open meeting law in Massachusetts and it's quite complicated to um, participate in discussions as a quorum of a board. And so the way that that typically works and the way that it worked here is there are representatives of the board that are identified uh, fewer than a quorum. So typically a couple, sometimes three representatives that participate in those discussions. And so we began discussions shortly after the lawsuit was filed in part because I reminded the board and frankly, the judge reminded me as I well knew that plan approval is not something that is typically denied. It's not a discretionary process like a special permit, for example, or a variance or a comprehensive permit. Uh, in fact, it's not even quite as discretionary as a subdivision approval. It is a tool that is meant to shape a project but not used to determine the appropriateness of a project of a specific use on a site. And so the, the judge reminded me that the likely outcome of any sort of litigation would be a remand. And so that was an incentive to me and to the board to discuss amongst ourselves and then to engage in these settlement discussions. And we did that for several months. And it all sort of came to a head in late uh, 2018, late 2019, when we uh, gathered together, um, had a meeting, representatives of the planning board, representatives of Dollar General, and we discussed all of these various issues. And I shared with you, and I, I won't do it again now, but I certainly can if, if it would be of assistance. I shared with you at the last session of the public hearing, uh, the remand hearing, 
a, um, a two-page sort of um, uh, handout of sorts that I've prepared to, to virtually provide to you that showed each of the um, nine standards in the zoning bylaw for the grant of site plan approval, and then showed which ones the board determined were generally satisfied at that time, and the ones that the board determined had not been satisfied, essentially the basis for the board's disapproval at the time. And so we spent that meeting, it went on for hours, we spent that meeting uh, going through specifically the criteria that had not been satisfied. And board representatives made certain demands that they believed were representative of the board as a whole and what it wanted. And the applicant um, agreed to certain concessions and, and refused other concessions. And as a consequence of that meeting, there was a general consensus that we had an approvable project. But that approvable project needed to be subject to a remand and act by the whole board because three members of a seven member board can't act on behalf of the board. We're going to act behind closed doors when there's been a disapproval to turn that disapproval into an approval. And so that's exactly what happened. I met an executive session with the full board after that meeting with representatives of both parties. And we talked about what had been proposed as a resolution and the board as a whole, and I understand different membership. There were a couple of members now on the board that were not on the board before. We generally agreed that a consensus had been reached. There was no written settlement agreement. So this concept that there was a settlement agreement and it was a vehicle to get the matter back before the board. There was a, a concept reach, a settlement reached in concept between the parties. And it was sufficient enough that I got authorization to join together with Dollar General's counsel and to submit a request to the court for a remand. So done by joint request. That statement was made earlier and that statement's correct. It was a joint request. It wasn't the judge saying, I've got to remand this. He had already said that was a likely outcome of the case, but he didn't say specifically, I'm remanding it at this stage in the process. That was by agreement of the parties, but it really wasn't for broad consideration by the board or reconsideration by the board of the projects fr from the get-go, or for that matter, even consideration in any, in any depth of, this, of the basic criteria. It was for the board to consider what the settlement that had been achieved in concept at that settlement meeting and essentially gives it, give it the thumbs up or the thumbs down. Put back before you. Now, I, I certainly appreciate the point that you made, Mr. Chair, that you know, it's been quite some time and that's no fault of anybody except you know, COVID certainly complicated matters for a number of months. Um, took us some time to get in front of the court and get a remand order from the court. The courts themselves were closed for a number of months. And so it's been some time since this project was before you. It's been some time even since we had those settlement discussions. Um, but I will say that the intended remand of a matter, whether it's a site plan approval or denial or a special permit or a variant, something that gets appealed and then gets remanded, especially when it's a remand by agreement of the parties to their counsel, the expectation is that it's for sort of a cursory review of a settlement that has been achieved in concept through certain representatives of the board. And that's really what this was intended to be. So the extent to which the applicant's willing to cooperate and to provide new information or additional information, whether it's to um, appease new members who weren't met on, on the board um, a couple of years ago and don't have the background, I, again, I can appreciate that or whether it's to address new information that has been brought up now, even if it relates to criteria that were deemed to be satisfied before or that weren't uh, demands weren't made in, in settlement, uh, the, the applicant's willingness through counsel to, to do that, to engage in that back and forth now, it's really up to the applicant. If the applicant says no, um, it's really not, you know, the applicant doesn't have to understand anything. I've heard a few people say, well, they've got to understand this and they've got to understand that. They can, they can be cooperative, um, but they can also say, you know, we feel we've been cooperative enough through settlement discussions. This was a remand for you to approve of the project that, uh, approval that we reached in, in concept through settlement. And if you don't do that, we're going to go straight back to court. And so I, I gave similar advice during the first session of this hearing when you contemplated a continuance to tonight, that you can continue this for six more sessions if the applicant gives you the permission to do it. But if the applicant at any point says, I'm not willing to continue to cooperate, it always has the opportunity to simply go back to court because of the posture of the case. And then to some extent, it's out of your hands. The court could remand it as the judge has sort of warned could be an outcome. Or the judge could say, well, you already had your remand and now I'm just gonna issue site plan approval 
based upon conditions that I consider to be appropriate or inappropriate, I'm taking it out of the town's hands because you've had two bites at the apple. So that's sort of where we are. And that's, I think, the, the most guidance that I can give. I can answer questions, but I just spoke for several minutes straight. So with that, I'll turn it back to you, Mr. Chair. Thank you. Thank you, Adam. Um, all right. So I think we all understand that. Um, the, 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 the new, um, one of the new pieces of information and one of the things we've always questioned is the stormwater, and that is an issue in Deerfield. We always want to be careful on that. So, you know, I, I now have a hard time making uh, a, a positive approval on that with some questions still out there. Um, those questions could probably be answered. So that's something that we could, um, if planning board members want to talk to the applicants about um, trying to get those questions answered, we could we could ask uh, ask for that. Is that something? people would be interested in? Denise, that's what you were asking, yes. I think. Yeah. Yes. Um, are there any other, at this point, I agree that it, it, we can't be keeping it wide open. So it has to come really right down to it. Um, Anna Lee, I agree that the, the I, I have three issues on the, out of the nine that I'm still not, I don't feel like have been answered, but um, it, you know, um, the pedestrian issue is not hasn't been addressed at all, um, and then the, the the character and scale of the building hasn't been changed at all. Um, so, um, yeah. And do you want any more comment from public? You know, unless it was really brand new stuff, I think we're going over the, the same. So, so I would I would say no. Okay, Mr. But, Chairman. At the same time, I haven't closed the public hearing yet, so I can't really say no. Yes, Adam. I, I, one, one thing I didn't mention, and you just sort of got to it, so I want to I want to be sure that I do say it on the record. So this was a, a remand hearing for really two different approvals, and you recall that this is how it was originally. Right. It's plan approval, but it's also a stormwater permit. And I know the board consistently, as many planning boards do, considers those two things um, simultaneously when the project requires both. Um, but I just remind you that certainly. You know, you have a, a limited scope of review and we spent most of the focus during settlement discussions were on the nine criteria for site plan approval, but you do have this additional stormwater permit and uh, you could act on both of them at the same time. You could also act on them individually and some things that are relevant to one are not necessarily and probably not going to be relevant to the other. Yeah. Does everybody understand that? Yeah. Um, so John. Yes, Max. Um, if the stormwater needs to be redesigned, I think it has a very large impact on site plan approval because it might change the layout of the site, it might change the size of the building, size of the impermeable surface. You know, if if the stormwater permit isn't correct or isn't going to be accepted in its current form, then it impacts the site plan approval. And can I ask you? Are you? Are you, do you? Have still have unanswered questions about the stormwater? I do. So I guess I would I would ask the applicant um, and Mark. I guess you're speaking for the applicant. Um, it, we would like more information about the stormwater. Um, I know that's not what you want to hear, um, but there is new information. I'm, I'm not I'm not a bit surprised to hear it at this point. Um, I, I think. I think the stormwater is indicative of the way this entire process is going. Unlike the site plan, which was unanimously denied by the board, three members of the board who originally sat on this matter voted to approve the stormwater permit. The reason they did it is written in your decision that because you had the conclusion from Ty and Bond that all the questions had been answered, it was the conclusion found that the project had been designed to meet the requirements of the Massachusetts stormwater management standards and the Deerfield stormwater regulations. Now, because you're hearing from council that you're more constrained under the law in site plan review than you'd like to be, now all of a sudden somebody pops up who wants to question not just the BOLA report, but the tie and bond review of it. We're prepared to stand on that, but not go through this circus anymore. 
to do anything else. That has never been part of the discussion. This is getting to the credibility of you as a community. We entered into good faith settlement negotiations to resolve a land use dispute. We made concessions that were requested by members of the planning board, including you, Mr. Chairman, who participated in those personally, and members of the board of selectmen, with the idea that that would get to an approval. That was the good faith negotiations. It wasn't gonna give us another spin of the carousel. It was going to have the process done. We were well aware that you had to go through the exercise of a remand, not so much for the board though. I don't, I don't think it's fair to say the board was gonna get a second bite of the apple. The primary reason for the remand is to make sure that deals aren't made in private back rooms. The public knows what's going on because the public has its own remedies at this point if they're unhappy with the site plan review or the stormwater permit. But as to the board as an entity, not the individuals on the board, the board is an entity and therefore the quality and character of the town as a whole, a deal was made and you were part of that deal. And now to all of a sudden try to subterfuge that effort by raising questions with regard to stormwater and the quality of soils where a bunch of other engineers have already looked at it time and time again is simply out of bounds. And we're not gonna participate in any further review of stormwater at this time. Thank you for your opinion. I was at the meetings and I, we talked about it and we, we did some negotiations, but there was no way I walked out of that meeting saying that this approval was going to be guaranteed. You, you may have walked out not saying it was going to be approved because you didn't like the answer that it had to be approved. But that was the conclusion of the settlement. That's uh, the spirit of the settlement. It may not be your spirit. I'll, I'll agree with that, sir. Okay. But it was certainly the spirit of the other people who were present in that negotiation because it wasn't just you. Right. Well, and now you, we you don't get to make all the rules here either. I'm not making the rules. We have seven of us on the end. Um, no, the judge is going to make the rules. Well, we can vote or not vote, and then you can do what you need to do. Well, you're, you're going to vote because you, that's what a remand's to do. You can't say, I'm not going to vote. Well, what we asked you about was the stormwater that we want more information. In we, which case, we, we would We keep provided you all the information. It's been reviewed by your peer review consultants. The board members who didn't have the benefit of reading it ahead of time were directed to it at the October 15th meeting ahead of time to do it. The fact that somebody shows up tonight paid by a group of people who have, have nothing better to do than try to oppose this development doesn't change my opinion that stormwater is a closed issue. Thank you. So planning board, we can keep it, um, we, can, we should make a motion to keep the public hearing open if we want to continue getting more information about the stormwater. We could, as attorney Costa said, um, well, I guess we could right, close the one site plan review or the stormwater keep one open. Um, again, we might still have questions um, for the site plan review, but I don't think we're gonna get answers to them. We're not gonna get any changes. So that's, that's really not, doesn't, doesn't, uh, it doesn't really help to keep that open, except as Max says, if the stormwater changes and they have to make changes to the site plan, then you need to come back again. Um, so that's why those two are linked. So at this point, I guess I'm feeling like I would want more information about the stormwater. So I would ask that we keep the public hearing open. We hire a peer review. Um, as, as our attorney has said, the applicant can do what they want to do. If this gets out of our hands, that's 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 a risk that um, you know happens here. But I'm open to hearing everybody's uh, input. And I believe it feels like a sound direction. Rachel, I, I do think that um, there is a there was a mandate that came through the voting box <laughs> in the time between then and now that is reflected in the composition of this planning board. Um, whether or not that, that actually impugns the integrity of a town's voting, um, the opportunity to vote in the people who you feel are representing you or not, I don't know. Uh, I'm kind of 
on the side of yes, that is part of the integrity of the town. I think that this is a complex, as was previously cited, a complex project is in an awkward spot. And the, I think we, the, the water management in our town is too complex already. Um, Max makes a strong point that there are links. That's why they both come to us. That's why they're both in our purview. Um, I would, I would vote. You know, I would, um, I would be eager to see more information. Even at the time, we were not all together um, comfortable with the findings um, about that site and the water runoff. So, I'm with Annalie. You want to make a someone want to make a motion? Yeah, move to continue the public hearing to um, seek very specifically yeah. um, issues, um, answers to issues related to stormwater runoff. Um, specific to, I think. Um, our stormwater regulations, yes, but as much as anything, um, just contamination of the groundwater. Um, the document that Judy Kundal um, cited, I think that would be a good um, assurance that we're moving in the right direction with any sort of approval here. Um, I think, um, you know, we asked for this once before, apparently it's somewhere. I'm going to have to look at the documents again because and I'll get Jen to walk me through it, but uh, an elevation, um, an understanding, I need a better understanding of the elevation of the retention plant, the detention pond. I think it's fine. I'm not, you know, I have no reason to disbelieve anything, but I, I'd like to see the elevations again now that I understand the situation better. Um, those are, those are, that's my main, I think it's an awkward site. Um, for pedestrian and vehicular safety, but it's it's zoned, so it's, it's zoned commercial. So that's a complication that we've already bought by having it a zoned commercial. Um, I think. That, I think you're going to put the soil soil types in there as well, Rachel. That will confirm the soil types, and if we need new calculations, Mr. Chairman. I, I'm just waiting till Rachel finishes. Thanks. Done. Uh, yes, Mark. I, I, Attorney Costa wanted to speak first. I'll defer to him. All right, Adam. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chair. So I, I just wanted to be sure that there was some clarity as to um, where you expect the information to come from. So I think I heard um, Rachel reference to some information that exists already and just seeking it out. I don't know where it is. I can't find it on our website. I'll have to find it from Jen. Jen's going to have to give me a um, personal tour, because at this point I don't see that document, um, and I, I'm certain that it's somewhere out there, but it's not. I don't see it on our website. So, so that's that's fine. And so, my I guess my second question, and maybe my third question too, is: Is it just that the board is seeking or moving to continue, so it has and its members have additional time to review existing information? Or is it, and I've heard references to this, is it that the board wants a further peer review or that the board is asking the applicant for more information? Because on the third of those three things, we already heard the applicant refuse additional information. So I don't think you're getting anything more from the applicant. On the second one, if you want a further peer review, well, then that requires some discussion amongst the board as to how that's going to happen what the funding source would be because typically the applicant provides funds when it's part of a cooperative process. This is no longer a cooperative process if the applicant's not providing information. You can ask, but I'm doubtful you're gonna get money from the applicant. So we need to have that discussion too. From what I'm hearing, we do need a, we are requesting a peer review. We can request it from the applicant. If not, um, I, I think the town has, we have a small budget at the planning board. Um, that we could use ourselves. Yeah. All, right. All right, so there's a motion to continue the public hearing to get um, some new information. I'll second. Max Antis. Max seconding, any other discussion? 
you'll you'll note the applicant objects to a further continuance. And would the applicant uh, be willing to pay for a peer review for some more information about stormwater? A second peer review because we've already paid for one. Right. So this would be another one based on some the new information about the soil types and the. Um, I think what Rachel was talking about is the runoff from the from the driveway, right? Well, those are that exists. Those are but those are three entirely different issues. I mean, uh, part part of the discussion um, of Ms. Blaine uh, was in the course of citing that she needed additional information to demonstrate that there was no contamination to the groundwater. I would point the, I would point the board's attention to the decision that involved the denial in which the board found that the proposed plan does minimize contamination groundwater. Um, so I, I, that, that feels like we are retrying issues that the board, even in its denial, had been substituted for. If, if, if I could have a better understanding of what you are looking for, I could at least have a cogent discussion with my client about a continuation. But if it's the board's determination that it's going to now send all of this information on stormwater back out um, to a third peer reviewer to look at it, then this isn't looking for one or two pieces of information in the uh, group of information uh, that's already been submitted. What that's looking for is something that, in, in our opinion, is well beyond the bounds of a remand, well beyond the bounds as to the basis for the order of a remand and one that will be looked at um, with some sternness by the land court judge when we revisit. Um, so the one thing we're looking for is, sorry, Rachel, go ahead. Yeah, let me just, let me just clarify that there is a, the, the um, plan was changed. There is a document, you have referred to it. You feel you have it, I can't find it. Uh, Ms. Kindle referenced it. It is about the moved, the, the change of the driveway, that that has changed that runoff, that direction. We just need that document, that's all. If, if, your, question is, if, if your question is the impact of the, of the surface, if I can finish, then we can figure out if I'm asking the right question so mm -hmm. I can direct Mr. Turner and try to answer it, mm -hmm. is how the driveway relocation is affecting the water that's in the state system right now or where the runoff from the driveway is being treated, how it's different than was before. If that's the inquiry, Mr. Turner can address, address that specific question. Correct. That's great. Then I'll have this, I will have Mr. Turner answer that question right now. Terrific. Okay. Um, so the, the, the question with respect to how the stormwater is being handled and, and, and if it was impacted or is changed from the, the prior plan, we, we had, obviously relocated the driveway at the request of the planning board and which was subsequently reviewed and approved by DOT with respect to how that may have changed you know, from a, from a hydro, hydrology or hydro, hydraulic perspective, it hasn't. It's just simply a, a shift of the driveway from that location which was previously proposed and considered and moved at the request of the planning board, but it doesn't affect um, the stormwater design as it was previously done. It simply just moves the driveway, if that's the question. It's, it's, not, it's not different in that regard. It's just in a different location at this point. Rachel, does that make sense or does that, we need some, is, is there, was there revised uh, any other calculations, um, Austin? All I'm hearing is that it's just the same. It's just to the right. Yeah. Yeah, we moved it approximately 50 feet and that doesn't mean that it changes you know, from a, a drainage perspective, it just means the driveway changed. It's just you know, safer. It, it just, yeah, it's an improved geometry from the board's perspective. And and that the uh, getting back to we why we requested it was a safety issue, getting further away from the intersection. Just just to be clear there. No, I, I, I understand, and yeah. we, we obviously didn't disagree, and then DOT yeah. obviously concurred. So yeah. yeah. Um. All right, so I, so I guess the big question is the soil, the soil type, <clears throat> the information brought up tonight, um, and does that change any, anything uh, to do with the drainage and runoff? 
in, in my opinion, it does not. And there's a couple of reasons. One, you know, we obviously went through a very extensive peer review process. We did what Ty and Bond asked us to do. Uh, and, and similarly, if, if you change the hydraulic soil group in, in the pre-development condition, you can't model the post-development condition as something different. So you, you essentially have the X on both sides of the equation there. So what you change it to, you're gonna get similarly reduced or inflated um, numbers on either side, depending upon which direction you go. And you know, I, again, and I hate to sound like a broken record, but I am being that right now. This was extensively reviewed and we did exactly what your peer review asked us to do. And they concurred that we addressed their comments and that it met all the standards. So it's, in that regard, I, I don't know that we wanna be revisiting soil types again and again. So, but again, my point, if, if I change a hydraulic soil grip and the soil group in the existing condition have to change it in the proposed condition, those two things essentially wash each other out. It's X on both sides. They cancel. I, again, I'm, I'm not a soil scientist. I don't understand that. If it's a different soil type, then it drains differently and it could affect a runoff. Right? It, no, it, it certainly does. But if, let's say, for example, and I feel like we're retrying this in the court of public opinion again, but um, to try and be, so, to be brief, if I change the existing condition to a hydraulic soil group D, which would in theory result in more runoff, or B for that matter, B, yeah. which, would, which would result in less runoff. I would then change the proposed condition to the same hydraulic soil group. I would not leave the post-development condition in a different soil group because you're not getting a direct apples to apple comparison. As a result, you know, I would expect that the post-development runoff would be reduced commensurate with that of the existing condition if I'm tinkering with the soil, the soil groups. So if I, if I lower it to get a reduced runoff in the existing condition, it's going to be reflected in the post-development condition in a similar fashion. And likewise, if I did it with a less free draining soil, I would expect more runoff in both conditions and they would inflate or decrease the numbers accordingly on both sides. And it might need to change the, the retention system. Certainly, and again, to my, to my point, you know, we, we did what the peer review asked us to do. And, I don't expect that there would be appreciable, if any changes coming from it, if we change the solar group, but that's not what we're here to talk about. So um, I, I feel comfortable design and clearly the you know, time bond did as well. Jennifer. Yeah. Um, are you taking public comment anymore? Um, no, we are in the middle of a, a motion. Actually. Okay, I'm just making sure and um, okay. Yeah. If, yeah. Um, so has anybody changed? So we have a motion on the table right now to um, get a peer review to look at the soil type and see if it changes any of the calculations and any of the runoff. That's the main issue that I have right now is that, was there anything else in there, Denise or? Annalie, Rachel, Max? No, I, th I think to me, that's one of the most important things. And I appreciate what Mr. Turner said, but you know, he is not the expert that Dr. Stevens. I can't Stevens. pronounce his name, Garbedian is. So I would defer to Dr. Gar Garbedian for this. So yes, I, I would second that motion. Uh, no, it's already seconded. I just want to make it sure. Seconded. Okay. You it's still on the table. Order. It's still okay. on the table. Okay. Um, and now we've asked the, uh, we're in the discussion phase before we vote, but it, we did ask the applicant if they would uh, pay for a peer review to look at that again. I haven't got a yes answer. Um, yeah, we, we, we don't have enough time to get to a yes answer. No, the yes is no. All right. So I, in that case, I, object, I, I object to the board even doing it, just so it's clear and that there's no surprises when, yeah. when we go back to the land court. I, right. I object to the idea that you're going to treat this as a reopener of each and every issue that's already been litigated and discussed. Um, all right, so the motion is to uh, hire a peer reviewer. We would use the planning board funds to do that. Um, all those in favor, we'll do a roll call. Denise? Denise Mason, yes. Annalie? Annalie Wolfcool, yes. Rachel? Rachel Blaine, yes. 
And Mary? And Mary Cloutier, yes. Max? Max Antes, yes. And John Waite, yes. 600. Zero, zero. All right. Uh, so we need to find a date, and that's our next meeting is on December 1st. I think we could hire, we could get someone in place to review. Um, review this stormwater by then, uh, December 7th. So can we have that uh, continue the meeting till December 7th? We should have put that actually, I think it should have been in the motion. Um, so if we can add that date um, and time, so December 7th at seven o'clock for the continuation of this uh, public hearing. Yield out the applicant's objection to the motion. Yes, and Mary, you've put it there. All right, and then we'll try to get them. Um, we don't want other new information or, well, I can't prevent new information coming, but we're not gonna go over other things at the time. We'll focus that meeting on the stormwater. Anything else on this item or we have two more things on our agenda tonight? All right, thank you very much. Uh, thank you. Uh, old business, no. Uh, that wasn't old business? <laughs> that was something else. Um, we, we have old business of a discussion regarding the proposed bylaw regarding formula-based business, but we also have new business, which is an A&R. Usually A&Rs are more timely. I'd suggest we move that up um, and hopefully it'll just take a, a short amount of time. And then if we need to go to the, um, the next issues, we could. Is that okay with everybody? Good. Um, from Sue. When did we get this A&R? Do we have it in our? Yeah, it's from Sue. We got it on the 27th. Oh, this is from someone we know. So um, I, I think uh, I think the applicant is with us. <laughs> Max, this is from you. Uh, yes, it is. <laughs> so I think let's um, let's start by asking you to acknowledge that you're uh, submitted an A and R and that you will not be participating in this discussion as a planning board member. Can you? Yes, I'm submitting an A and R, and I'm not going to be participating in this as a planning board member. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you very much. Um, and, and now as a uh, as the applicant, could you just give us a quick uh, overview of what the request is? Um, I have a big sort of mishmash of lots and buildings and it's been brought to my attention that I should probably put the house on one and the rest of it on another or to leave it on the the group of lots. So that's what I did. I had uh, uh, Dan Werner, you know, lay out a lot, uh, the right size and the right offsets and for the house and left the rest of it alone. So it's the um, lot one is being created and that's 60, just over 60,000 square feet with, uh, I got a zero in there, how much frontage? Um, 228.01. 228.01, both of which are, this is residential agriculture. Um, so those are the dimensions for a building and you've got a building there. And Next, the, what are the dotted lines? Those are the uh, old lot lines or the existing lot lines. So uh, you're just looking to remove those, add this. Well, no, 
I asked Dan if I should move them and he said they just leave them and that'll be its own lot and you're just creating you're creating a separate lot for the house only and then just leave the rest alone and the the side the house to the side lot i wish there was a measurement there but that's at least whatever it's supposed to be 20 or yeah it's 15 feet it's on the paper copy i was surprised it wasn't on the electric electronic copy yeah um and 15 feet is all you need for an RA for? Um, it's 10, 10 feet is right. the minimum. Oh, wow. But I know the neighbor, so it's not going to be a big deal. Well, <laughs> yeah, I don't I know. the son of a gun, careful. I don't know how friendly he is, exactly. <laughs> um, I have a... Um, a completed A and R. The check for 150 was submitted because it's creating a lot. So there's two lots. Everything looks completed um, properly, and signatures are appropriate. Um, I, I, I guess Sue would have told us if if there was anything missing. So the um, electronic copy um, you submitted also, Max, probably uh, a disc. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Any board members, any questions? Do we want to move to endorse? We endorse. Uh, I move that we endorse the A and R at. Uh, what's the number here? Sixty-seven. Sixty-seven Stillwater Road. To create a lot within the greater lot. To create lot one. I second that. Any discussion? All those in favor? I'll go around and roll call. Denise? Denise Mason, yes. Annalie? You're muted, Annalie. Annalie Wolfkull, yes. Rachel? Rachel Blaine, yes. And Mary? Amory Cloutier, yes. John Waite, yes. Five zero zero. that is endorsed. Um, Jennifer, how we've been doing this, you'll leave it out on the front. Well, you got election stuff, but um, is it still okay to leave it there for? Yeah, wait tonight? till the end of the week. Don't you think that tomorrow's going to be Suzui? Yeah. Oh, not, please don't come tomorrow. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> no. And um, Max, is there a mile? There's a mylar there. Sue has it. Uh, yeah, I I put the four copies in the mylar and uh, everything. Okay, so um, I'll put that out after elections are through. Yeah. Another nope. copy went for a walk. So if you can come in as promptly as possible, that would be great. <laughs> Give us that, yeah, yeah. Find both uh, the Mylar and the paper copy would be wonderful. We normally sign two or three paper copies. I think assessors, I don't know if they're getting one, but they're supposed to, the planning board gets one. The applicant should get one, I think. Yes. Yeah. So it'll be up. Uh, all right. Je uh, excellent. Um, Jennifer, the other two issues are um, is there anybody from the public still here that wants to talk about the formula thing? Oh, I'm sure. <laughs> there is 12 people here, but nobody's raised their hand. So I think, oh, nope, we've got a hand raised. All right, so um, hand raise. So let's let's go to that. Uh, but I do want to shorten this. Um, uh, it's that that other issue went a little bit longer than we had hoped. So what would you like to do? You want to talk to them, or do you want to continue this? Because well, let's let's talk. Well, what do you think? Can we nine thirty? Yeah. So we really ten thirty. <laughs> really need to end it, but we need to know what we're going to do next. I think is um, is really probably well. I know, and and if there is a time for us to think about it, it's now because. Okay, I'm letting Debbie in. Thank yes. you. Debbie. Thank you. Uh, I can't find the. Where the hell we go? Here's the agenda. Thank you. Thank you. And I, I will be try to be very brief. Really, we, we were placed on the agenda 
uh, in the meeting in, it was in September when, when um, Judy Kundal and I and others uh, spoke, spoke and introduced the bylaw. So I don't wanna you know, revisit that wheel, but at, that, at the end of that meeting, uh, we were put on the agenda for this meeting to have any further discussion that the planning board wishes to have, because we do have a, a public hearing on the bylaw set for December 7th. Right. So I think that the only uh, thing tonight was just to be able to answer any questions that you may have um, about the the bylaw, um, any you know, any so that you can give a public notice and have the language that if the, unless there were any any things that you wish to alter or change. Um, so we're just here, to, I was just, we're really just here at your request to answer any questions yeah. you may have. And if you don't have any, we're fine. Well, one thing, Debbie, is that I'm like, the last time we, we talked about this, Trevor happened to be there. Yes. And he was here on another concern. And we do want to make sure that the, whatever we are, you know, as we mentioned before, there's no abutter. So we want to make sure that that December seventh is well. I'm I'm just wondering we can't get the newspaper to cover something or whatever. Um, yeah, I'm sure we can that. get people out. For, yeah, so for, that people are coming and listening, and that yeah. there's a lot of discussion around it because it's not a, it's, you know, it's it, the implications are big, um, and it, it, yeah. it's the kind of bylaw that it marks a town of integrity. Um, for a certain attitude about development. And we, we don't necessarily want to take that attitude, um, but it might also give us some protection against, um, I mean, there are other ways to protect us against um, unfavorable or, or development that we, we are concerned about, that we have concerns about. Right. Um, so this is just one step. I mean, reconsidering. Absolutely. This one. So, and, and, you know this bylaw may be adjusted and or right. you know or see what see what we're bringing it forward and and it's here for debate and discussion and conversation yeah. okay. um so uh, so i think the publicity of it is the biggest thing and we we do yeah. the public public postings but those are only so many people see it so um right right an article okay. a paper but you also need to be able that's sure um, uh, you know, I, I'm sure we can do something along those okay. lines, or um, we, we'll, we'll talk about it in any case. And uh, really, it was just a matter of saying, were there any shifts or changes or things that, so that before we got into the uh, publishing a notice, that was the key question, I think. And, and understanding that in a public hearing, many things could change, so. Yeah. And I, I think not to go backwards, but I think some of the things that came up in this, you know, public hearing tonight are in there that there's some, there's more negotiation about that the town has more input yeah. into these kind of things. And it's not to stop people necessarily from coming in, but it's to make it so it fits into the town better. And that is in the purpose of the bylaw is, is yeah. there are ways in which uh, so-called formula-based businesses can be uh, in the town if they made certain adjustments that fit better with the community. And that can involve signage and some other elements um, of their of, of the way in which they engage with the community. So that's that's what this addresses. So if it, if it helps eliminate the meetings like we've had the past <laughs> couple it, months, it, that would be a good thing. It, it, it's possible that it could. <laughs> Seven, I, I think. I just Rachel, have to right? also, I know this is off topic slightly and it's just to, to laud this board for your bravery, for um, in the way that you handled this this evening. And I think it shows the integrity, the wonderful, admirable integrity of this community in, in the way that you've responded. So I just um, couldn't help but say that even though it's off topic, but thank you. It's appreciated, but, thank you. But we, thank we you for this, the service to... that you're giving is extraordinary and I'm sure it's taxing and I'm just I'm very very grateful to you so thank you thank you thanks Debbie so so let's um get the wording for that bylaw and um it you all have it and okay I, the only thing I would want to point out that is that on the copies that you have that you may have you'll see that there are some things in dark bold yeah. that is commentary that is not part of the bylaw language itself 
You'll see that also on the page of definitions for formula-based business at the very bottom, again, some text in bold. Though that's simply commentary to help uh, the reader understand better what is being proposed. So uh, the bylaw wording itself is everything around that. <laughs> that's, that's not in bold. So just, just to, to right. clarify for your... Hey, hey Debbie, I have a quite, this is Denise, I have a question. Yeah. You know, now we were talking about signage. Is there anything, because I can't recall, it's been a while since I've looked at that. Is yeah. there anything specific about the signage that you have in the bylaw? I mean, yeah. aside from keeping in with the character of the town. Well, the, it's part of the definition. So the, the part, part of the definition of what is a formula-based business, there are six elements of the definition. Right. And a, a, um, a, a, a business that has three or more of those is classified mm -hmm. as a formula-based business, some of which refer references standardized signage. Okay. As a part of that, so that is a part of that definition. Um, standardized facade, standardized decor, color scheme uh, okay. used throughout um, the interior of an establishment, um, trademarks, service marks, labeling, bags, things of that sort. Right. Um, goods that are sold that are under a specific label. Um, a standardized array of merchandise mm -hmm. um, being under with uniform markings at a por proportion. So those mm -hmm. are the things that are laid out in two categories of formula-based retail. There's a, there's a formula-based food service, which has also six descriptors yep. of what makes it a formula, formula-based, and then formula-based retail. So the food and, and mm -hmm. other retail are, are separated in the, in, in the definition. Does that, okay. Does that help? Yeah, no, that, that helps. It's just, you know, going one step further. So if, if we, you know, if that would not be allowed, so if someone, for instance, and someone keeps referencing, I don't get out much these days. So I haven't been to the Dunkin' Donuts. Where is that in Haydenville or Williamsburg? That was that people, Judy people keep Kungle referencing. Yeah. Okay, so, so that's what I mean. I don't know whether that signage was different. Is that just a back and forth? Is, are there any specific requirements? that we would impose. And maybe this is getting an, into too much discussion right now. But I just think the bylaw, these, these um, you know, and these are amendments, by the way, they're not new bylaws, they're right, actually right. amendments to existing bylaw, to the existing zoning. But no, it's not attempting to uh, describe specifically what the signage should be because it's gonna be different. Mm -hmm. sure right. I think if there's any need for signage changes it might be in the sign bylaw i don't okay. and i'm not familiar with that and i haven't looked at it so i <laughs> don't have any anything to say on that but i think the the, the purpose here is to try to create a definition that okay. helps to to say what is part of a formula based business and all I can say is that this has been reviewed by um, Bob Ritchie, who formerly worked for the Attorney General's office reviewing bylaws. <laughs> and he uh, was able to review this, um, uh, take, a, take a look in, in, an, in, in an informal kind of way. He's a friend of Jeff Lacey. Jeff Lacey helped create this. And um, Bob Ritchie um, said, yes, this would pass muster in the, in the terms in which we are creating it. Okay, great, thanks. I think right. Rachel was showing us that it's getting really late. So yeah. I took the hint, Rachel. Jennifer, Jennifer, <laughs> I was showing you my pictures of that. Uh, oh that gosh, I'm sorry. All right. <laughs> okay, thank you. Jennifer? Thanks, Debbie. Sure, thank you. Thank you for, for entertaining this. We'll see you December 7th. There'll be another public- Well, just, just Jennifer has something to say, I think, about oh, this. Um, I was just curious if anybody in the town, had, in uh, the town I formerly worked in, we had something called Design Review Board, DRB, and yeah. that board was, we regulated uh, color and height and the look and um, nice. it just went to this other, and it was a discretionary board that gave yeah. their input towards that, that the planning board and the zoning board and other boards took into consideration. And it, I found it to be quite helpful in helping people redesign some of the things that were um, yeah. were looked at for the community instead of making a, a different bylaw. I just was when when I hear you having these discussions, I didn't know if that's something that Deerfield has has ever 
Well, if I, uh, um, if I may, I was just going to, oh, here comes the Dunkin' Donuts. Nice. I volunteered to be on that board, by the way. <laughs> but I, I think part of, part of the idea is to be able to say, well, you know, what is a formula-based business and to have uh, some, at least some criteria that describe it, that, get, that, that define what that is. And we don't have that. And it isn't really a design review in quite the same way, I don't yeah. think. I mean, I, I I know because I've read yeah. I've read the formula, yeah. and so yeah. I just I just didn't want to eliminate. I mean, my my purview is like eliminate thing uh, potential uh, income to the town, and also what we have in town versus what then we wouldn't be able to allow in town, and right. you know, sort of <clears throat> balancing everything and have it still have um, yeah. Deerfield have the same respect, but um, that they want for their community, and it looks like. The other hand was lowered, so. Oh, good. All right. <laughs> I think we're all good. All right. Thanks, Debbie. We'll um. Yeah. Thanks, we'll Jeremy. be in touch. All right. See you December seventh. Yep. Thank you. Thank you. And um, then the other thing was accessory apartments, but we can. Um, that just needs to stay on our radar, but we don't need to talk about it tonight. Is there anything else that we want to talk about this evening? A motion to adjourn. Hey, can I just say one thing? Yes. I'm sorry, I just wanted to, you know, respond to some editorializing that was happening earlier. And there is integrity. There's a lot of different things that can be considered integrity. And listen to your listening to your neighbors and responding to the people whom we represent, um, I think is a, you know, a way that we have a lot of integrity. And I just wanted to remark on that before before leaving. Thank you. Put it in the notes. I think we agree and put it in the notes. Exactly. Yeah, <laughs> yeah that, that I, uh, when, when that attorney talked about integrity, I think we all didn't need to hear it. We all have I don't need beliefs, a lesson. So, yes. <laughs> so I, I, need, I, I need to make a motion that we, we adjourn. I'll second that. All Rachel in favor? Glenn. Rachel all Glenn, yes. And it's, um, and, and Mary, if you could put back in the notes that Max got off the planning board for one issue, but oh. then he was back on and now he, then he finishes the meeting, I think, just to make it. Right, that yep, gotcha, All thank right. you. Thanks for pointing that out. All right, good night. Thank you, everybody. Oh, oh, Thanks, Jennifer. Can move. Yes, Rachel Blaine, yes. And Mary Cluder, oh, yes. Oh, yes. 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 yes, yes, Six zero zero. Perfect. <laughs> good night. Good night. Good night, thank you.